playoffs. Seven teams from this region will make the playoffs. And as we look at the current rankings, AM Commerce at number six, Angelo State at number seven, perhaps a must win scenario for both squads. It probably is. In fact, you could probably say today is a playoff game as well to play in. You don't want to leave yourself in the situation of relying on a committee voting you in tomorrow at four o'clock when those rankings are finally announced. So again, a win, you're in, a loss, you're hanging by a thread as to whether you'll make it in or not. Both these teams are relying on super quarterbacks. Miklo Smalls for the Lions, Payne Sullins for Angelo State. Yeah, both have high football IQs. Both coaches talk about them. First off, Miklo Smalls of A&M Commerce, the most accurate passer in the Lone Star Conference, hitting almost 70% of his passes, and it actually should be higher according to the coaching staff. He's had several drop passes this year. Overall, Smalls, though, again, leading the Lone Star Conference in completion percentage at 69.8%, almost 2,200 yards, David, with 21 touchdowns and five interceptions. On the other end, another high IQ quarterback for Angelo State, that's Payne Sullins, a Texas Tech transfer. He was a walk-on at Tech, much like Baker Mayfield was a few years ago as well. He got his degree there, then transfers here to Angelo State, and boy, they're happy to have him, hitting only about 61% of his passes on the season with 19 touchdowns against only six interceptions. He's a good leader for this Rams offense. Challenges for both our defenses today in a possible winner-go-home scenario. Texas A&M Commerce, Angelo State, the kickoff coming up next. Your life is full of special moments, and they're all worth protecting. With Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Texas, count on trusted health care coverage to be there for life's unpredictable moments. Enroll in a plan today by calling 1-800-488-1000 or visit EnrollNowTX.com. Carry the card that's been focused on people in Texas for 90 years. Plans may be more affordable than you think. Take comfort in knowing there are options that cover a variety of needs and budgets. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Texas will cover pre-existing conditions and has preventive care at no additional cost to you, which not all plans do. The moment is now. Open enrollment ends December 15th. Call 1-800-488-1000. That's 1-800-488-1000. Picture yourself with a plan you can trust. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Texas. Through it all. Tell us who your favorite teacher is as Concho Valley Homepage presents Teacher of the Week. Brought to you by Concho Educators Federal Credit Union. Log on to ConchoValleyHomepage.com and tell us what makes your teacher great. If selected, they'll win a prize package in appreciation for their services. The prizes awarded are a plaque from Angelo Awards, a flower bouquet from Southwest Florist, a delicious cake from City Cafe and Bakery, and a gift certificate to the Olive Garden. Teacher of the Week is brought to you by Concho Educators Federal Credit Union. Be sure to check out ConchoValleyHomepage.com for details. And welcome back to the Grand Stadium on the campus of Angelo State University. This is the regular season finale. And as we just mentioned in the open, perhaps a win or go home scenario for both these teams, Texas A&M Commerce and Angelo State. Top seven teams out of what's called Super Region 4. And the Lone Star Conference is part of that region. Top seven teams make it to the NCAA Division II playoffs. Angelo State with two losses so far on the year eight and two but falling last week in overtime at eastern new mexico texas a&m commerce also with an eight and two record and that is one reason why again we think it may be a winner go home scenario because the teams below them at eight nine and ten have three losses they are all winning so far today neil and so therefore the loser of this game, especially if it's Angelo State, is going to be on a two-game losing streak, and we'll have to hope that the NCAA committee still puts them in. Absolutely, David. Uh, some people feel that Commerce with the loss still might be in simply because their strength of schedule, but that Angelo State with that loss, as you mentioned about last week at Portales against Eastern New Mexico, that they really are on the bubble, that they're in a must-win situation. In fact, when we talked earlier this week with uh, Angelo head coach Jeff Gersh, he says he feels it's a must-win to get in the playoffs. Again, they're coming off a grueling eight-week Lone Star Conference uh, schedule. So, again, it's a, it's a must-win for them. But, again, you talk to your friend David Bailiff, you know, it's always one game at a time. He learned that from his mentor, Jim Wacker, one game at a time. He says, there's no pressure on us. So we're just going to go out there and play. 
He says there's no pressure, and perhaps the players will play that way. But it is an A&M Commerce team with that 8-2 and two mark. And neither the Lions nor Angela State have a victory over any of the other teams that are in the top seven of the uh, current Super Region 4 rankings. So as far as the action on the field here, this is the Texas A&M Commerce team that comes in with certainly the most history, at least recent history. They were the 2017 national champs. A playoff appearance would be their fifth straight which is the third longest streak in the na streak in the nation. It's an Angelo State team looking to get to A&M Commerce's level. Absolutely. Of course, Commerce got there over those last four under a head coach, Kobe Carful, that is a Angelo State alum. He played linebacker here for the Rams back in the late 90s as well. But Angelo State's been kind of up and down over the last couple of decades. They've had a couple of runs, a couple of years where they got in the playoffs and, and looked pretty good, but they've not had the consistency that you'd like to see uh, and that... Of course, their new kid, coach, Jeff Gersh, now in his uh, first season, is hoping that they can get things going and have a consistent winning program. It will be Angelo State receiving our opening kickoff. Jake Viquez, junior from Rockwall, has the ball teed up at the 35-yard line. Big one here, and we're glad you're with us in our final Lone Star Conference game of the week. Wind at the back of Commerce in the first quarter as the kickoff sails into the end zone for a touchback. Beautiful day here in the Concho Valley, 69 degrees at the kickoff. You said the wind at his back, about 14 miles per hour out of the south. And David said it's even swirling a little bit down on the field. You mentioned Payne Sullins, starting quarterback for Angelo State. Three years at Texas Tech, but left the team in 2017. Got his economics degree from Tech and then transferred as a grad transfer here to Angelo State in the spring of 2018. His second year as quarterback of the Rams. Almost 2,400 passing yards, 19 touchdowns, and just six interceptions. He'll throw on first down, and Austin Landry, great through freshman out of Pearland in the Houston area, has the catch and brought down right around the first down marker. Sullen's doing a good job recognizing the defense. They had man coverage out on both sides, and seeing that sees the slant come open underneath right there for the easy pass and catch, and again gives the Rams a second and short. Get a nine for Landry. It's 22nd catch of the year. Sullins looks to throw on second and short. Pressure coming. Sullins able to get away. And a first down, sliding down, and then the contact. Angelo State wanted a flag, but the contact made by Jalen Edwards Cooper, he lunged to Sullins before he slid while there's no flag down. What's the pivot right here by Sullins? He was looking for the running back, Devin Manning, who was well covered at the bottom of your screen. So Sullins has to take it and get what he can and slides down with the first down. First handoff of the game. And a gain of just a couple. That is Devin Manning, the sophomore from here in San Angelo, went to Central High School. Former Bobcat, as you said, from Central High School, played his high school ball just a couple of blocks away in the San Angelo Stadium where the Rams used to play their games up until five years ago, building this new LeGrand Stadium. Get a three, so second down and seven. Manning again. And dragging the pile forward, able to get a couple. Came in with almost 400 yards on the ground this season. Did a good job, as you said, drug the pile forward. And uh, head coach Jeff Gersh telling us that Manning was out of football for a couple of years and came back down, says he runs well downhill, and he showed it right there as he drug the pile forward. Third down and four. Blitz stepping back and firing the screen. It's going to be enough for the first down as Manning with the catch brought down just shy of midfield. Good pickup on the blitz by the Angelo State offensive line, and they had the Rams had the right play call, the screen play, and if this diving tackle at the ankles by Sammy Gray is not made, he may have gone a long way. The Angelo State offense held a 265 yards last week in an overtime loss at Eastern New Mexico. Caleb King, senior from Fort Worth, his first catch. And the ball now in Lions territory. 
King, a little bit of running, different running back than Manning. Manning, of course, at 230 pounds. King more a little bit of a more of a scat back at 191. So you get, saw him get a good block out there on the edge and get across midfield into Lion territory. Sellins has completed his first three passes. Now four for four. And a first down past the 40. And we said both both passers very accurate. Sullins came in hitting over 61% of his passes. While, of course, Miklo Smalls for Commerce on the other side of the field hitting almost 69%. So we're going to see a lot of completed passes today. Kellen Pichot, junior from Fontana, California. His first catch of the game and 12th of the year. Alizé Thomas in motion now in the backfield with Sullins. He looks to throw again. Going deep to the end zone with a flag down. It's incomplete. Landry, the intended receiver, might have been held up. Yeah, there was a little bumping down the field. Flag thrown down inside the 20. Sullivan did a good job of moving the safety. They had one deep safety there. It got him back Fires to the middle to the of the field. Holding number one defense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Again, the quarter, L.A. Dawson, the six-year grad transfer from Austin. Not the pass interference, the holding, so just the 10 yard penalty. Dominic Ramsey, usually starts at free safety for Commerce, is out of this game due to injury today. Sammy Gray, who typically plays corner, is at safety. L.A. Dawson, Darius Williams, the two corners. Sullen swings it out, and Manning has a second catch and a good tackle made. Limiting the game to short yardage, that is Williams, the senior from Fort Worth. Here on this opening drive, uh, Sullen's really making use of his running backs, even though it's a short gain. He's, he's had some success swinging it out in the flat to both of the running backs. That time it's Manning, also the king on a previous play. And it's just one on the reception. Thomas trying to turn the corner, and Commerce is there. Alizé Thomas, the junior from Fort Worth, no gain, third and nine coming. Rams try a little razzle, dazzle with a jet sweep, but to Thomas, even fake the pitch there, and, and Commerce is not going for that fake. They well, they had it well defensed down to the edge, the dropping for no gain. Wholesale substitutions for Commerce as Angelo State spreads it out. Third and nine. Pass completed, but Manning slips down. It's at the 25. That's going to be fourth down and about seven, or make it a long six coming up, and Angelo State's going to attempt a field goal. David, I was really surprised that Commerce didn't call a timeout with that whole self-substitution. Looked like they could have been out of position, and very fortunate, as you see, Manning just slips after getting that reception, or he might have been able to pick up the first down. Connor Flanagan looking for redemption. Missed the 29-yarder in overtime last week in the three-point loss to Eastern New Mexico. This kick from 42, and he's got it. It ties a season high for the senior from Austin. Rams get three on their opening drive. Three-nothing in this all-important game for both squads. Train, extreme conditions testing. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. Train, the most reliable heating and cooling. Toyota Thon is on. Time to get a great deal on Corolla Hatchback. RAV4, Tundra, and more. Oh, honey, look. Is anybody seeing this? Wow. Anybody? During Toyotathon, get $3,000 customer cash, or qualified buyers get 0% APR financing for 60 months on a sophisticated new 2019 Highlander. Toyotathon is on. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. 11 play, 50 yard drive, ending in a Connor Flanagan field goal as the Rams on top. And Commerce with the ball for the first time. And good yardage on the return, then dropping the ball for a moment. Still able to recover, and the Rams 
are going to have very decent field position just past the 35-yard line. Kater Kohu on the return for the Lions. Yeah, Dominic Ramsey, of course, you talked about their uh, All-American kickoff returner is out this week, suffered a twisted ankle last week in, the, uh, in that game, so a new return man. And now we talked about for Angelo State, Quarterback Payne Stallings getting off to a hot start, six of six. Now we see Miklo Smalls, the uh, top efficiency passer in the Lone Star Conference out of the field for the Lions. Completing just under 70% of his throws, almost 2,200 yards, 21 passing touchdowns, just five interceptions. He's a three-time Offensive Player of the Week in the Lone Star. And Smalls can razzle-dazzle with his feet and finds his man down the sideline in Ram territory, Chance Cooper, the junior from Leander. Watch if we see the replay as, as Angelo actually had a three-man front, but they rushed the stand-up linebacker who was all over Smalls, could make the tackle, and that almost turned a disaster for the Rams as Smalls gets outside the pocket to do everything. Quarterback makes another pass completion for the game. We're 7-7 seven seven on passes. Uh, Nobody's missed one yet. Smalls head coach David Bailiff says, but Smalls at quarterback, it's like playing with 12 because he could do so well passing and running. You saw how he extended that play with the rollout. Able to find Cooper for good yardage. And now Smalls on the ground. Should be enough for the first to the 33. Smalls again, a dual threat quarterback, does everything that Coach Bailiff had his freshman year at Rice and then got him to come to Commerce for his redshirt sophomore year. You see there again. They went empty, so it opened it up for the quarterback draw for Smalls to ramble up the middle for another first down. Came in third on the team in rushing. He's approaching 250 yards on the ground this year. They got 10, and another first down for Commerce. Antonio Lelie, his first carry. Junior from Copperus Co. brought down around the line of the scrimmage. He started the season meal as the fourth string tailback, but due to injuries to J.T. Smith, E.J. Thompson, and Carandel Hale, it is Leleye at tailback. By the way, he's averaging seven yards a carry coming in. Yeah, the epitome of the next man up, Leleye, comes in, as you said, averaging seven yards per carry. 606 yards on the season with the six touchdowns, and he has been a godsend as the fourth team running back. Makes you wonder how good those first three were. He was hurt last week. Jamal Williams, the fifth string tailback, had over 100 yards in the win over Permian Basin. Small's in trouble, stays on his feet, and then slammed down to the 35. Yeah, good move by Smalls as the pocket collapsed. He was wanting to go long straight down the field, had a receiver streaking down the middle. But again, the pressure by Angelo State didn't allow him to get off the, the pass, and this is a good job of avoiding the sack and gaining, well, only losing a, a couple of yards as opposed to losing maybe 10. Andy Becker, sophomore from Liberty Hill, brought him down, and now Commerce, after back-to-back -back first downs to begin the drive, faces third and 12. Blitz, Smalls hammered down, sacked. Never saw Letty French coming. Yeah, Smalls was locked in. He wanted to come in on that one-on-one -on -one coverage on the side to Ryan Stokes, but never had a chance with the blitz getting right there. As you'll see right here, came around the edge from the blind side, and Smalls very fortunate he didn't cough up the ball with that hit. Fourth sack of the season for French, the junior from Brock, and what had started off as a promising drive goes backwards, and the Lions have to punt. Baikez is the punter as well as the kicker. Fair catch called, but inside the 10, Devin Washington calling that fair catch. Good height on that punt, really pins the Rams back. Again, that's one of those rules of do you catch it inside the 10, but the way that ball was hanging up, it might have it died right inside the 10 and, and even been worse than where the Rams end up with it. So again, the top seven teams from this region will make it to the Division II playoffs, which starts next week. A&M Commerce coming in at number six, Angelo State at number seven. Now, you and I think if Commerce loses, they still have a decent shot to make it. It would be three losses. But if Angelo State loses, they may be in a little more of trouble. 
Good run. Manning. And it's a first down just shy of the 20. Well, Jeff Kirsch had a good description of him running down here, and that was a perfect example of it. He's a big load at 230 pounds, and once he gets going downhill, he's tough to bring down and gives the Rams a little breath breathing room now once, since they were pinned inside the 10. Manning again. Stood up and thrown back. Devin Demon, sophomore nose tackle from Forney, got there first. Now, we saw Commerce uh, three weeks ago against Western New Mexico. And again, their defense really stood up well. And what head coach David Bailiff likes to say, he plays that four-man front and really likes the back end to be able to take care of themselves, almost play independently. But right now, Angelo's having some success against it. Manning again. Squeezes through. First down and more. Tripped up around the 35. Edwards Cooper brought him down. Yeah, Tackler had to go low. He says, I don't want to take this load up high, but Manning's again going downhill. He's got up some speed, and the tackle there for Angelo State actually Lloyd Howard on the, on that. No, you're right. Had the wrong number there. Cooper makes a good tackle on it. Five carries, 31 yards for Manning already. This is Caleb King thrown down for a gain of a couple. Get the change of pace back. And right now, you get a feeling that Angelo may be softening up Commerce a little bit with the run. And there may be play action may be coming any time here. And apologies, I was Manning on the carry. Now King checks in. Get a two for Manning on that last carry. The Rams, a 50-yard drive, ending in the field goal to begin our game. This is their second drive of the contest. Sullins, incomplete. His first incompletion through the hands of King. Catchable pass, a little high for King. Sullins, again, really runs that pivot pretty well when he comes out and, again, comes back to the left, has to throw it across his body just a little bit high. Had a little bit of pressure on him, but they've really been utilizing the running backs in the passing game here early on. It's an Angelo State team averaging 37 points a game, just over 400 yards a contest. Mentioned just 265 yards in the loss. Eastern New Mexico that's uh, last week, but they only had the ball for 19 minutes because the triple option attack in Portales. They would have won that game. They might have been sitting pretty for a playoff berth. Pressure coming on Sullins, who escapes. Gets to the sideline, but shy of the marker. Yeah, brought the uh, Lions brought the blitz from the slot corner, who's lined up to cover the slot receiver. But it was picked up well by the Rams, and Sullins had to bootleg it out. Picks up a little yardage, but not enough for the first down. It's good pursuit by the Lion defense. To the Rams, punt for the first time. Jared DeFelice, 38 yards of punt, but don't let that fool you. 23 times he's pinned an opponent back inside its own 20. So his leg is better than that 38 yards of punt average. Showing it off here against the wind. And a good return. This is Kohu. Brought down just past the 45. Well, normally when you lose an All-American punt returner like Dominique Ramsey, you're in trouble, but Kohu's a great one in his own cell. Lions will have the ball for the second time when we return. <laughs> Rio Concho Terrace, we provide the very best studio apartment style living and services to residents age 62 or older at the most reasonable rates you can find anywhere. We offer a wide variety of services designed to provide a secure and carefree lifestyle. Our Terrace family enjoys three meals a day, housekeeping, transportation, maintenance, and 24-hour staffing. Soon they discover how rich and full their life can be. Rio Concho Terrace, we provide retirement living the way it should be. I did some early shopping this year. One for you, one for me. I love it. I got us a little something, too. Yeah? Yep. One for you. And one for me. I love it. Oh, actually, that was supposed to be for me. I love it. I like red. Step up to GMC and get over 6,200 below MSRP on this 2019 Acadia Denali. Plus, current eligible non-GM owners get nearly 2,100 additional purchase cash. Visit Mitchell Buick GMC in San Angelo. 
cap off Watson Court. 3-0 the early lead for Angelo State. A familiar name now hitting the Lions of Texas A&M Commerce. Success at Texas State and Rice and now in Commerce is David Bailiff. 15 years overall as a head coach. Good to see him again today. There he is. It says he can't imagine anything else but coaching. Took a year off, opened a po' boy store in the Houston area and having a lot of fun in Commerce hoping to get the Lions to the playoffs for the fifth straight time. Lions run a quick bubble screen and good defense for Angelo State on the edge by Deshaun uh, Douglas as he makes the tackle there. Here Smalls steps back and throws, finds Cooper. Lost a shoe right around the ramp 35. One thing Smalls looks so far is confident, especially when he's on the run. Well, yeah, he's had it all. He's had it going all year again. He's got the arm. He's in a system he was familiar, familiar with when he was a freshman at Rice uh, two years ago. So when he comes to Commerce, it's not like he has to learn a whole new system. He's comfortable in it, and it's shown in his performance this year. Lately, AA. I practiced that name quite a bit this week. Of about three <laughs> and doing a good job with it. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? You know, what's impressive about him, you mentioned a 606 yards total rushing, but he has only lost 16 yards, and that simply means he rarely is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Good size, 5'11, 210. In fact, David Bailiff says he's like a billy goat, he's so hard to bring down. <laughs> I did not ask David if he's tried to take down a billy goat before. Smalls pressure. Boy, this is what he can do so well. Make something out of nothing and then some. Flag down about 10 yards behind where Smalls went out of bounds, however. Yeah, probably got a block uh, out there, but, <laughs> but he could do it everything. If we see this on replay, he puts on some moves and jukes them out. And again, the Lions had a lot of misdirection on that place. We'll hear the call Holding here. Holding number 21 offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's second down. I got the receiver Christian Brewington. But watch this. Pockets collapsing. One missed tackle. But this is Miklo Smalls making him miss the tackle. Again, makes a nice move to juke his way outside before going out of bounds. Net result of it's still going to be you know, all the way back at, their, at the uh, Ram 40 excuse me, 38-yard line. And so, right, because the penalty's from the spot of the foul, it's still a gain in the play, now second down and two. So we've already seen a couple or of second times. Second and 12, I yeah, we, We've already seen a couple of times today, Smalls very well could be dropped for a big loss, and just that escapability he has in the pocket is paying off for the Lions. Right, loss of two, not 10. Cooper's third catch. Brought down around the original line of scrimmage and third and long coming up. So the Lions now go in the short passing on that play. Again, a couple times they tried to go deep, but the pressure by the Angelo State Ram defense, and again, they had it coming again from the edge, has forced maybe the Lions to say, we need to shorten up some of our routes so that the deep short out pays off for a short game for the Lions. Good mark to the 33 for Commerce. Third down along seven. Up the middle, catch made, first down. Chance Cooper, four catches in the corner for the junior from Leander, came in with 24 on the year. That time the offensive line gets smalls times they pick up a stun in the middle, and he completes it for the first down. Again, Cooper. Lions in the red zone. So Commerce again after that first series when they were trying to go deep and the pressure from Angelo was keeping them from doing it. Starting to hit some of those down inside little short passes, bubble screen like that time to move it down the field. Smalls to the end zone. Cooper just out of his reach. So the bootleg 
had just one receiver he was locked in on and had to throw it into double coverage. Couldn't quite get it into the end zone, and they'll bring it back for a second down. Lions have moved the ball pretty well on this now their second drive against one of the best defenses in the nation. Angelo State allowing under 15 points a contest. They have 17 interceptions, good for fourth in Division Two. And, of course, the ball hawk in the secondary is Devin Washington with seven interceptions. So watch number 23. He just always seems to come up with it. Angelo State calls timeout. So a third and five coming. So we mentioned the 17 picks for Angelo State. You have a quarterback for Commerce and Miklo Smalls. Not only has it been very accurate, as you've mentioned, but just the five interceptions thrown this year. Yeah, so again, this is the immovable force against the irresistible object, or what it, however that, that saying goes. And in watching this, the first couple of drives here, David, and I'm thinking, yeah, they've got a lot of interceptions, but I think a lot of it probably is coming from the pressure up front. Their defensive line and their blitzing as well has really done a good job of putting pressure on the quarterback. Angelo State coming in very good against the run, but when you have a dynamic quarterback like Nicholas Smalls, it's hard to prevent the Lions from gaining yards on the ground. So far, though, Lions have had the majority of their yards through the air. Smalls is 6 of 7 for 60 yards, and Chance Cooper has five catches for 56 of them. Lily A.A. Emotion. Smalls. Huge hole on the left side, a touchdown. There's the 12th player that David Bailey's talking about. What they did, Commerce did a great job. They spread it out with three receivers, split right, then moved Lele AA in motion on the right side. So it looks like it's going to be a bubble screen and spreads everyone out, and it just opens it up for the smalls to, on the quarterback draw to just go untouched for the touchdown. Final block by the tight end, number 11, Tyler Geis. And no one was close to Miklo Smalls on that running score. Baikez gives the Lions a 7-3 edge late in the first. A play 54-yard drive set up by the nice punt return by Kehu. So again, Commerce with two losses. One, a three-point loss at Colorado State Pueblo. They're going to make the playoffs. The other loss at Tarleton State, who's ranked number one in the region. So they're going to make the playoffs. So if they lose this game, they have three losses. And assuming Angelo State makes the playoffs, if they win, Commerce has an argument saying, look, all three of our losses are playoff teams. The reason why we think Commerce's situation is a little better than Angelo State is because of last week, Angelo State went to Portales, New Mexico, lost a heartbreaker in overtime to Eastern New Mexico. Commerce doesn't have a loss like that. Eastern New Mexico has six wins, but they're not going to be making it into the postseason. And that's why Angelo State's head coach, Jeff Gersh, told us this is a must win to make the postseason. Yeah, strength of schedule for Commerce gives them an edge, even with a loss. Uh, and again, you still hope. You don't really still want to leave it in the hands of, of the guys in the committee room to decide, but they still got to feel like they have a shot where Angelo's got to feel real nervous if, if they should lose this ball game. It was interesting what Jeff Gersh said. Not just it's a must win for this season. He said it's a must win for this program. It's just his first year, a former defensive coordinator here for five years, and he has increased the expectations here in San Angelo. Well, what a season. Eight and two for a team picked to finish fifth in the Lone Star. That kick just crossed the end zone, and so it's a touchback. You know, scoring here right before the end of the first quarter, a little note, uh, maybe a little trivia note, but a little note is, again, that allowed the Lions to kick off with the win instead of scoring at the opening of the second quarter, which which could make a difference in the field position, what looks like to be a very tight ball game. Paige Sullins is 6 of 7 passing for 31 yards. And Devin Manning has 33 yards rushing. Just a field goal so far. For the Rams. That was off their first drive, a 42 yard field goal by Connor Flanagan. Sellens, the Texas Tech transfer, is from Gatesville. Setting up the screen, Austin Landry on the bubble, brought down just shy of the 30. 
Second catch for the true freshman. Yeah, so far both teams keeping most of the passing short. There's been a couple of potential long shots where the quarterbacks have been flushed from the quarterback. But, but right now both are content to keep it the short passing game. Fun first quarter and an all-important game for these two teams. I love the outdoors and I love fishing. It's fun to get out there and go chase those bass around. And what's really fun, you never know when you drop your lure in the water if you're going to catch a little one or you're going to catch a giant. But even if you go out and you don't catch one, down the water's a good day. I had a lump come up on my neck. I thought it was cancer, but I didn't know. They cut it out, and sure enough, it was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And that was in uh, May of 1999, so when I was first diagnosed. So I'm a 20-year cancer survivor. Shannon Hospital has actually been a lifesaver for me, literally. Dr. Cherokee is the most caring, talented doctor I've ever met. I told the doctor, you keep me alive until my children graduate from high school. Well, now they both graduated from college, and uh, I have a three-year-old granddaughter and a grandson on the way. I'm blessed to be alive, and I give Shannon a whole lot of thanks for that. Our Lone Star Conference game of the week in San Angelo. David Salzman, Neil Horn, a 7-3 lead for Commerce. Angelo State has the ball for the third time, second and six, with the ball just shy of their own 30. Yeah, again, control passing game for both of these clubs. Smalls is averaging just 10 yards per pass completion, while Solens is averaging just five yards per pass completion. Caleb King to carry. We've seen King and Manning so far. No Lloyd Howard the third. Senior from Belglade, Florida, with over 500 yards rushing on the year. Rams, one of three on thirds. First down markers just past the 35. Thomas brought down for a loss. Nice open field tackle, beating the uh, block by the other receiver. Again, they tried to run that bubble screen out there, but the other receiver unable to make the block as the defender gets right past it to make the tackle. That's Kohu, who's playing at corner when Sammy Gray moved over to safety due to the injury of the All-American Dominic Ramsey. So Angelo State will punt for the second time to Felice. Now with the wind at his back here in the second quarter. This is a boomer. Kohu all the way back to his 15. Gets away. Now stacked up just past the 25. Still a decent return. So we said earlier he's returning punts now with the All-American Dominic Ramsey out. But as Coach Bailiff told us in our call there earlier this week, he said, Hey, that's just swapping out an, all, an all-conference player for an All-American. <laughs> Kohu's that good as a punt returner as well. Last drive for Commerce. A plays 54 yards. Miklo Smalls, a 17-yard touchdown run. Smalls, 77 all-purpose yards so far. A&M Commerce has 81 yards overall so far. There he is, sophomore from Plano in the Dallas area. Had a career-high rushing yards last week against Permian Basin. At 73, you think with the way he runs, he'd have more than that in the game coming in. Big hole, Leleye. How about the left side of the offensive line opening that hole up for the junior from Copper's Cove? Yeah, I got running downhill, and, you know, the Rams had just a single high safety, and once he got past the initial surge, it took a while for the pursuit to get there to bring him down after rumbling for a nice gain to the 43. Good pull by the right guard, number 64, Travis Daft, sophomore from Prosper. 17 yards on the carry for Lele Yeye. Smalls under center. Wide open on the rollout, Christian Brewington out of bounds just past midfield. Nice bootleg, Brewington lined up, 
I would say he's a tight end. He was actually a wide receiver. He's 6'5". He's a big target for Smalls to find on that little bootleg out on the left side to, for a nice gain into mid in, across uh, the midfield stripe. As both teams again sticking with this position passing game early on. It is something, and you understand this from Angelo State's standpoint, just looks like every play they are so much respecting the running ability of Miklo Smalls. He's left a lot of those passes in the flat open. Lely AA on the carry. Thrown back, and it's going to be marked, it looks like, just shy of the first down marker, which is at the 46. In the 3-4 defense for the Rams, again, is get those linebackers flowing side to side, and that's what they do this time to bring him down after a very, after a very short game. Hunter Kyle was one of the first ones there, number 24. Who his head coach calls the best linebacker on the Lone Star Conference. Hard to argue against that. 87 tackles coming into the year, 273 in his career. 13 tackles in two straight games coming into this one. Third and short. Lily A.A. got enough. Lily yeah, line up with two tight ends and get your big running back just straight ahead for just enough, as you said, David. With the lean, had to get out to the 45. Well, where the spot is just short of the 45, we may, yeah, he's got just enough for the first down. Angelo stayed against the triple option attack of Eastern New Mexico, allowed 327 rushing yards. By the way, they allowed minus two passing yards. Eastern had one completion the entire game for minus two yards. Kept it on the ground the rest of the game and won it in overtime. That's the way the Greyhounds play. On the jet sweep, good yardage again. And out of bounds right around the 25-yard line is Darian Owens, the junior from Fresno, California. Owens showing some speed on that sweep as he gets to the edge and the Rams unable to keep him contained. And he gets to the sideline, as you see, got a good block as he cut it inside another nice downfield block there. And he gets good yardage as the... Uh, as the Lions again starting to threat, threaten once again, getting close to the red zone. Twenty-two yards on the carry. Trips to the right of Smalls. Through seven of eight passing so far. That pass tipped. Donovan Jackson, junior from here in San Angelo, got his hands on the football. Yeah, the Rams keep bringing in those defensive, uh, say he's a linebacker, but they keep bringing different players around the edge. It's Jackson that time you see come on the delayed blitz, and he's right in the face of Smalls and then knocks it down. So again, it is 3-4. They'll move those linebackers around quite a bit, and and bring pressure from different ways. Play clock still at 18. Smalls lofting a pass, corner of the end zone, out of the reach, incomplete of Keelan Smith. Rams brought a deep blitz that time. I think it was Letty French, number 25, but he got picked up. And that's what allowed Smalls to be able to get this pass away. Watch from very deep. He times it perfectly, but picked up well by the running back. Smalls able to get it away and just got his wide receiver turned around and couldn't connect. Remember, Commerce is going against a pretty strong wind here in the second quarter. And although Jake Viquez has a nice leg as long as 48, imagine David Bailiff wants to give him some more yards if this play sets up fourth down. On the hitch. That'll do the job inside the 20-yard line. Ryan Stokes, first catch. 36th catch of the season for the senior from St. Louis, Missouri. One of the team leaders. Rams do a good job just keeping everyone right in front of him. They're, they're okay with them, with the Lions catching it. They just don't want to run very far, and they pursue well to the ball there and bring him down after the short game. So Mike has, again, field goals of 47 and 48 yards last week. He is 10 of 13 on field goals this season. This one from 37. Hey. 
Push that right, no good. It's at the end of the win, and again, if, if you're pushing one way or the other, he'll tend to push it even more. The odd thing is he has four misses all year, and it's between 30 and 39 yards. He's much better from longer range. The Locker Room is back on Contra Valley homepage. With high school football scores, highlights, and top stories available right from your computer. Right at your fingertips. The Locker Room. The Locker Room. Only on Contra Valley homepage. Dot com. Check it out today. KLST presents Veterans Voices, honoring those who served. 94-year-old veteran Patrick Ryan was a Higgins boat pilot during World War II. In the pre-dawn dark of June 6, 1944, he guided soldiers onto Omaha Beach and into history. Unlike many on D-Day, Patrick Ryan made it home. Veterans Voices, sponsored by Cisco Equipment. 325-653-2121. Tune in to Inside the Game. We'll have highlights and scores from all your favorite teams right here in the studio. Along with post-game interviews with players and coaches from a different location each week. Inside the Game, Friday nights at 1035 on KSAN. Sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group. So Angelo holds off the missed field goal by Jake Viquez. And score remains 7-3 in a game which very likely the winner... Almost 100%, we can say, is going to make it to the Division II playoffs, which starts next week. And the loser will have to sweat out selection Sunday, 4 o'clock tomorrow on NCAA.com is when the playoff brackets will be released. Payne Sullins, 8 of 9 passing, but just 34 yards. He'll look to throw here. Catch made, just in bounds, and a short gain for Thomas. And using that possession passing game and keeping it short, moving the completions again, it will not look as far as average yards for completion very good, but they're just keeping the ball moving, and you get a, got a feel at some point they're going to suck the defense up and take a long shot, but for right now, content, content to take the underneath pass completions. Gain of maybe a half yard. This time going deep. Some jostling, no flag. And I like the flag staying in the pockets of our crew. Good coverage downfield. Austin Landry was the intended receiver, and L.A. Dawson had him step for step. Yeah, good. You're, you're exactly right. Good no calls, both of the defender and the receiver. Ten yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Now that, that flag wasn't on the pass. It was in the middle of the field. Yeah, completely away from the where our eyes were focused on the sideline. So, again, a holding call against uh, Angela, again, rather against uh, Commerce. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down for the Lions. Now from the 31. Sullins tripped up. Might have lost a yard. Yeah, we've seen Smalls do that successfully for the Lions. Smalls doesn't quite have the elusiveness that his counterpart does on the Commerce side. But again, got to try to loosen up this defense just a little bit on a nice diving tackle there for Commerce. I think that was Pierre Leonard, senior from Tyler. Sullen's bobbles. And the throw just a bit short. Looking for King. But we have a flag down. Outside, number 97, defense in the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty at second down. It's on the senior, Chris Williams. The so Colors right now shooting themselves a little bit in the foot on defense with a couple of penalties that. The Rams are trying to hope to keep their drives alive now. Second down and five. Manning. Short gain. Maybe two on that carry. Rams go with a two-back set that time. Had both King and Manning in. Flared King out in the right flat. Hoping to open up inside for Manning, but the Lions do a good job of stuffing for a very short, short game. Oh, 
Third down four. Cover showed blitz. Rams may be changing the play. Still 13 on the play clock. Bubble to Landry, no chance. Well, that was quite the chess match. If you watched it, you saw the Lions fake that that blitz from the slot. Then the then the Rams adjusted, put three receivers over there, and the blitz didn't come. And then the Lions had plenty of uh, defenders rather over there to defend that pass. And it's the captain Nima Bebaani, the senior from Plano, making the stop. Came in with 212 tackles in his career, and that forces for it down. Third straight punt off an Angelo State drive. This is going out of bounds on the foot of DeFelice. Makes me wonder if Kohu, who's had some success running a couple of punts back already in place of, of the injured uh, return man for uh, the Lions, again, able to force the bad punt that time. Trying to punt it out of bounds, keep it away from the return man. Total yards right now favoring Commerce, 134 to 76, but just a 7-3 lead for Miklo Smalls and his Lions. Smalls 8 of 11 passing 70 yards to go along with 18 yards on the ground, including a 17-yard touchdown. From the 39. Not much doing on the outside. In fact, maybe a loss of one. Yeah, the jet sweep just not working. Christian Brewington was the blocker out there for the Lions in that play. But he had three players that had to try to block as the Lions, as uh, Rams got over there very well, pursued a drop and stuff up that for no gain. Yeah, that's Eric Ebear on the carry. Five foot four freshman from Manville in the Houston area. Forward progress, the gain was close to two. First carry for Jamal Williams. And he gets about five. What a story. Sophomore from Inglewood, California, was a linebacker until a month ago. We've mentioned how banged up the Commerce backfield has been. Williams essentially is the fifth tailback for Commerce. And by the way, he had 103 yards and two touchdowns in the win over Permian Basin last week. Yeah, he's actually a good running back. You see there, he plays like a linebacker, though. He's the first one to, to hit the player in front of him. We saw him three weeks ago in the win over Western New Mexico. Ran the ball very well. He's tough to bring down, but again, he likes to meet out the punishment before he even has to take it himself. Transfer from Minot State in the Dakota, so whenever it gets cold here, I'm sure he's not complaining. Cold for Texans, that is. Williams stacked up, just got to the line of scrimmage. Rams make the stop. Never got a chance to get going to meet out any punishment that time as grasping at the ankles was the defensive tackle, McCoy, number 55, as he just really wraps him up for very little. Junior from Dallas coming in with a stop to set up fourth down. Now, this is an interesting look. There are two players back for a &M Commerce. They are both their punters. Jake Vikes and Andrew Gomez. Vikes gets the snap. Gomez probably fortunate he didn't have to take on a block. And the ball down shy of the 20. I've seen many things in my day. First time I've seen two punters back on fourth down. Still working. No one gives you a performance at Carnegie Hall. No one just hands you a PhD in astrophysics or makes you the starting lineman on a championship team. Greatness is achieved through grit. If you're striving to live a life more fulfilling, A&M Commerce will give you that opportunity. For we are champions of the determined. We are Commerce. We are Lions.
You ever seen this before, Neil? No. Both punters back for this fourth down long snap. <laughs> Luckily, they, they didn't fight for it. And when they go with the left footer, I, I'm presuming, again, one may be more of a line drive kicker into the wind. I, I don't know why else you do this, but I'm like you, Dave. I've never seen that before. Andrew Gomez has been the punter for most of the year, but Viquez has been getting more work lately back there. All are scoring in the first quarter. Angelo State scored to their opening drive. 42-yard field goal by Connor Flanagan. Big hole, Manning. Closed up well by Edwards Cooper at the 24. Game of six. Rams kind of got away from Manning on that last series. Now going back to him for a nice game. He had seven carries for 34 yards before that six-yard six carry. And again, he's a load at 230 pounds. You get a nice opening like this one, he can go. This is his ninth carry. Pierre Leonard brings him down, big 300-pound senior. Enough for the first. Yeah, I like it. I mean, they're having success with Manning. And if he can just kind of pound the rock a little bit like this run right here, where down the defense, it just will open it up maybe to take a shot. Rams have two timeouts left. Lions with three as we approach four minutes left in the first half. Sullen's in trouble. Now finds his man and breaking free. Tripped over his own feet just shy of the 45 and a nice run after the catch by Colin Pichot. Nice job by Sullen after being flushed out of the pocket, scrambling left and then had to throw back across the body, finding the open receiver. Watch this, has to come back and throw it back across the body and finds the open receiver and the first tackler there that, that went down or the first attempted tackler goes down. Sullen's going deep and incomplete. So they test Kohu, who again is at corner today with Sammy Gray being moved to safety. Kiki Chisholm, leading receiver for Angelo State, the intended receiver, but he's been quiet today, no catches. Yeah, they haven't been able to find anything deep yet. Still trying to, mostly going for the possession underneath passes and the running of Manning, but you got to figure at some point they got to keep taking a shot and try to open that up. Chisholm, third in the Lone Star with 56 catches on the year. Looking for him again, and complete again, Kohu wins the battle. Yeah, got there just as the ball did. They're able to break it up, you know, half split second earlier, that might have been uh, interference. We got there just in time to break it up. And this is Chisholm at 6-4. Kohu listed at 5-11, able to get his hands in there. It's not on my watch. The Rams are just one of five on third so far today. Blitz. Catch made, flag down, as Alizé Thomas will have enough for the first, but pending the penalty. Now, Thomas was one of three receivers split wide. They cleared out. But we'll see about the penalty. Offside, number 93, defense in the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty. Result of the enforcement is a first down. They did a 10 and they got 11 on the reception. Cor cor correction, the penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. Marcus Thornton gets it right. We knew what he meant. Ball at the line, 46. Again, got the Rams, two timeouts left with 3.22 to go in the second quarter. Manning. Good burst after he was able to just get outside that edge. Might have lost his helmet as well. No, I apologize, a Lion defender did. And Manning gets about six. Jalen Hodge has to come out. Yeah, we just keep talking about Manning's load to bring down. He gets inside. And that's interesting. So, David Bailiff calls timeout. Now, you see there's 308 left. Obviously, he's thinking, regardless of the result of this drive, he wants Mikola Smalls of the offense to have enough time to perhaps put points on the board before the break. Yeah, he doesn't need much time. 
but also may just need to give his defense a breather. Again, you know, that pounding of Manning when, they, when they've gone to this running game on this drive, it can wear down the defense a little bit, just wants to regroup because they're getting that territory where they, they would like to get a stop and not allow the Rams to get any points on this drive. So probably also just a chance to regroup. Good point. Seven plays so far on the drive. It's gone for 42 yards. Of course, perhaps a must-win for A&M Commerce. Definitely it is for Angelo State. David Balaam said, you know, we don't talk about winning. We just want to be the best we can be every week and go 1-0. But he says he, he learned that from his mentor, the great Jim Wacker, who he played for at Texas State when it was known as Southwest Texas. Sullins stepping way back and finds King, but this is going to be a loss. Lions snuff that out. David Bailiff not calling timeout here. It's a loss of about three. Well, the Lions sniffed this out well as they let him come through and watch the big defensive tackle run it down. Getting the little running back is wrestling to the ground was Chris Williams, a 6'1", 285-pound senior defensive tackle. Blitz. Catch made, it is Chisholm. And that second effort, I believe, is enough for the first. He needed the 36, brought down to the 35. What a great effort by Chisholm fighting for this one. The blitz again forced Solons to get rid of it quickly, maybe more quickly than he wanted to, and would have been stopped short of the first down, and it might have been a, the second defender that even coming in, making the hit, caused him to fall forward. Right, Devin Demon, as he made the hit, Chisholm was able to fall forward that extra yard. Manning tripped up. Might have lost a yard. I believe that was Darius Williams coming in to make the play. Yeah, Williams makes a good play. Recognizing the, the toss sweep, coming up from the secondary, splitting the blockers, and just going low for the nice tackle. Clock down to 140. And now Commerce. David Bala for his defensive coordinator, Xavier Adibi, didn't like what they saw. Yeah, they were probably in a formation they felt vulnerable to, but whatever the Rams came out with as well are not ready. So, you know, you don't want to take timeouts into the locker room, especially if you give up a big play, and that's what they want to avoid is not have the big play here on second and long. May recognize the name Xavier Adibi had a five-year NFL career. Was a defensive analyst at Arkansas last season. And his first year as defensive coordinator here in Commerce. Of course, pretty much an entirely new coaching staff at Commerce. Billy Reibach, who was a former assistant under Dave, David Bailiff at Rice, is the offensive coordinator here. And at Angelo State, Jeff Gersh, first year as head coach after being a defensive coordinator here for five years. A lot of new coaches on both sidelines. The Sullins has to throw this one away, pressured on second and ten. Sammy Gray all over the quarterback, and Sullins very fortunate. He's able to get outside the pocket first off and then to throw it away without a penalty. Watch number three, Gray around the edge, gets past the block, just tosses the running back aside, and then forces Sullins outside where he has to simply throw it away. Wind has died down a little, still at the back of Angelo State, but they want some yards here. They at least want to attempt a field goal. The ball's at the 36. Third and 10. Another blitz. Sullins escapes. Throws in traffic. And only a lion, I believe that was Williams, got his hand on the football. Yeah, dangerous. Sullen did a good job of getting out of the pocket, keeping the play alive, but then threw into traffic, as you pointed out. You know, being third down, figuring, well, what have I got to lose? I mean, we may end up punting it away anyway. And see, unfortunately, that one did not get picked. And so this is out of Connor Flanagan's range, even with the wind at his back. Tied a season high with a 42-yard field goal earlier today, but... Jared DeFelice will punt. Remember, Commerce with just one timeout remaining now. And got a little too much on that. 
Lions will have it at their own 20 with 117 to go. Right there shows why, again, that last pass by Payne Sullins really wasn't necessarily a bad one if he got picked off. It would have been down around the 20 where he ends up anyway. A 12-play drive for Angelo State, but no points on the board. We have not had any points in the second quarter. Angelo State scored on its opening drive off a 42-yard field goal we just mentioned by Flanagan. That was with 9.57 to go in the first. And then Miklo Small, 17-yard touchdown run for the Commerce quarterback. Put the Lions up 7-3 with 18 seconds remaining in the first. And it's where we still are. 141 yards of offense for AM Commerce. 70 through the air, 71 on the ground. Lely AA churning those legs and that's enough for the first down. Clock stopped as the chains will be moved. Yeah, now that you get a little bit of yardage, may put a different spin on the play calling here. You want to get a some yardage first, and now with just over a minute to play in the first half, they may start going to the air. To the ground first. Flag down. Lelie stays on his feet. They only get about six on that carry, but we'll see what the flag is all about. Holding number 71. Offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. It's first down. From the left guard, Dion Malone. Now, Commerce does get the ball first to begin the second half. Let's see how aggressive the Lions are here. And they're not going to be aggressive at all. It's time to take a knee. Yep. One now, timeout remaining this deep is probably what they need to do. Angelo State has two timeouts. They had three. Not sure we'd see a knee here. Jeff Gersh knowing that you're only relying on somehow a fumbled snap to get the ball back. He will take those two timeouts. But he still has a I use them. See David Bailiff there wearing the blue coat on the right. What a nice job he's done because when you take over a program that has not had success, sometimes it's easier to get acclimated. This is a team that's made the playoffs four straight years. They won it all in 2017. And yet, led by his quarterback, Miklo Smalls, Lions have barely skipped a beat. Eight and two coming in, six and one in Long Star Conference play. And that'll do that it in the, the first half. The first half. <laughs> all our points in the first quarter, winner of this game, Pretty much definitely in the Division II playoffs. The loser will have to sweat out selection Sunday, 24 hours from now. 7-3, Lions lead the Rams at the break. You know, everything we do at Jim Bass, we do big. Like the giant savings you get during our giant tag sale. Right now, during our giant tag sale, you can get a brand new 2019 Ford Expedition, just $49,977. Don't miss our giant tag sale only at Jim Bass Cars and Trucks, Houston Heart and Harden Road, or 24-7 at BassBucks.com. Woo! First in line! You don't have to wait for Furniture Row's Black Friday VIP sale. Out? Nope. Shop today for huge savings store-wide. Plus seven years, no interest financing. And best of all, the more you buy, the more you save. No limit. Or get free gifts with qualifying purchase. But I got a tent. It really is a great tent. The Black Friday VIP sale, only at Furniture Row. Wanted, like new or vintage Christmas ornaments and decorations for the 5th Annual Decorations for Death Sale. Gather your Christmas decorations and donate them at the First Community Federal Credit Union by Monday, November the 25th. All those who donate will be entered into a drawing for a $25 gift card. The sale will be Saturday, December the 7th at First Community Federal Credit Union from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. For more information, please call Vicki Loso at 224-3607. Buff 3-2, moves to one standby. Mach 1 Alpha, this is move 2-1, roger this. Mach 1-1 one, one Alpha, moves to one 
Ambush activity at your 360. Copy all. Confirm hostile. Adjust route to field hospital. Make immediate left. Buff 32, engaging. Buff 32, moves to one. Damage assessment, no hits or activity at location. Hostiles eliminated. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can, too. For free help, visit cdc.gov slash tips. Train. Extreme conditions testing. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. Train, the most reliable heating and cooling. gift you really want is at Nissan's Black Friday event. Save big on our tech-filled lineup. Like Rogue with available Safety Shield 360 or Altima with available intelligent all-wheel drive. Hurry in now. Save up to 3000 on the 2020 Rogue or get 0% financing for up to 72 months on 12 models. This is the place I love. There's nowhere better than the place I'm from. The control makes my world go round. I've got my logo on. The control Valley is where I belong. Case it is everywhere I go. Turn it on and it feels right. Yeah, it feels like home. I've got my logo on. Wanted, like new or vintage Christmas ornaments and decorations for the 5th Annual Decorations for Death Sale. Gather your Christmas decorations and donate them at the First Community Federal Credit Union by Monday, November the 25th. All those who donate will be entered into a drawing for a $25 gift card. The sale will be Saturday, December the 7th at First Community Federal Credit Union from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. For more information, please call Vicki Loso at 224-3607. Help is not the four-letter word they all warn you about. In a time of distress, in a mess, it's common to depend upon and lean on. Help is not weakness or bleakness, so hear this. There's no shame in my feeling. We all need help's healing. So rejoice now. Hear my voice now. Support is what the world is about now. All we need to do is reach out now. We're here to listen, to provide help and hope when you need it most. It's your life. It's your voice. Use it. The exceptional licensed plumbers at Superior Services are fully qualified, experienced technicians that can help any plumbing challenge. They repair, they replace, they can fix whatever isn't working. Whether it's a plumbing leak that must be stopped or a water heater that needs to be replaced, Superior Services will end up being your best friend because the quality of work is second to none. So don't keep struggling with a faulty showerhead, a leaking toilet, and stop those high water bills. If it isn't working, call Superior Services at 223-5442. The San Angelo Police Department is asking for your assistance in helping to reduce vehicle burglaries in our city. We're asking you to remember these three important steps. Lock it. Lock your vehicle anytime you're away from it. Take it. Take your keys and valuable items to include firearms. Hide it. Conceal your belongings in locked compartments out of sight from potential criminals. A locked vehicle is a great deterrent to prevent vehicle burglaries. Social Security is with you through life's journey from birth to retirement. As your life changes year to year, so do your needs. For over 80 years, Social Security has helped to meet your needs and is committed to improving access to the services that make a difference in your life. Today, you can verify your earnings, estimate your future benefits, apply for retirement, manage your benefits, and even change your address. 
all from the comfort of your home. Social Security's online services help put you in control with secure access to your information anytime, anywhere, allowing you to spend more time with family, friends, or simply just enjoying the day. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. See what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. You know, Rams like defensive struggles. <laughs> well, that's what we have here. 7-3, Texas A&M Commerce leads Angelo State. We're at the half in San Angelo. David Salzman, Neil Horn with you. All of our scoring coming up in the first quarter as we take a look at first half highlights. Angelo State, though, got on the board first, a 42-yard field goal by Connor Flanagan on their opening drive. Yeah, made up maybe a little bit for the miss last week in Portales. And then we got, you know, you lose your All-American punt returner, so what do you do? Well, the Lions just... Reach deep in the well and bring in Cater Kohu, who has a great punt return there to set up the Lions. And then Miklo Smalls really showed off his two-way game on the Lions touchdown drive. Yeah, flushed out. And again, as head coach David Bailiff said, with him out of the, on the field, it's like having 12 players out there. You know, you've always got to keep him contained, and then he does the same thing on just a quarterback draw. This is a 17-yard touchdown run. Came with 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. Gave AM Commerce a 7 3 lead, and that is our score at halftime. 152 total yards for Commerce. They're holding Angelo State to 122. Commerce ranked sixth in the latest regional rankings. Angelo State ranked seventh. Teams 8, 9, and 10 have all won today, and the top seven teams from this region will make the playoffs that begin next week. So, an important second half coming up for the Lions and the Rams. I have a couple of investment properties that I take care of. On one of the houses, I was redoing the bathroom. Thought I was doing fine until I got home. Just felt out of gas. And I kind of started getting the feeling that something wasn't right. Shannon's Heart Care, ranked in the top 50 in the nation, gave Richard the ability to take on whatever the world brings his way. My birthday was December the 20th, so I told those doctors that Shannon had given me the best birthday present that I've ever had in my whole life. I wanted to give back to my world, and using CASA as an avenue, I can give back just a little bit, and it allows me to share my heart with the rest of the world and with these children. By working with CASA, we are able to have an impact on the stability, the joy, acceptance that these children feel. You are still giving of yourself to these children who need us desperately. So don't be afraid of getting out there and getting involved in these children's lives. They need you. Oh, emojis! I thought the conversation just got dumber. Ugh, internet trolls, just ignore them. I like you just the way you are. I believe in you. She's a hugger. Give her a squeeze. <laughs> How about that? Hand? Ah, there you go. Thanks, mate. I want to tell you about a leading cause of blindness, wet age-related macular degeneration, or wet AMD. And it's not just a normal part of aging. It took away my mother's ability to read, play bridge, even recognize faces. As her vision slipped away, so did her independence. But now, there are treatments that weren't available to my mom. To learn more about symptoms and treatment options, visit looktoyourfuture.com. People tell me I have big pipes. Know what else I have? 
a big kidney. When I was four, I got a transplant from my mom to save my life. So I know how important kidneys are. Eat right, exercise, drink water, and keep your kidneys healthy. Because whatever you're good at, there's only one you. I'm Angelica Hale, telling you to at your kidneys. If you want to learn more, call 855-NKF-CARES. And welcome back to San Angelo. David Salzman alongside Neil Horn. A 7-3 lead for Texas A&M Commerce over Angelo State at the break. So we stress again the importance of this game. The NCAA committee will decide the seven teams from this region, which is called Super Region 4, which will make it to Division II playoffs beginning next week. A&M Commerce is at number six. Angelo State is at number seven. So the winner of this game for all intents and purposes, is going to get in. The loser is going to have to sweat it out. Four o'clock tomorrow, Central Time, is when the tournament brackets will uh, be released. And what will make the loser of this game sweat more is that teams that are ranked 8, 9, and 10 have all won today. Sioux Falls defeated Wayne State by a score of 41 to 21. Sioux Falls is ranked number 8. Winona State went on the road. They're ranked number 9, defeated Concordia St. Paul. 20 to 10 and then the number 10 ranked team Dixie State defeated Adams State 35 to 10 so Winona State and Dixie State even uh, maybe on the outside looking in due to the eight seed Sioux Falls winning but for sure again the winner's going to get in Neil and the loser is going to have a long 24 hours ahead losers on the bubble we talk about that during basketball time but this is definitely a bubble time for the loser of, of today's ball game as well you don't want the committee to be deciding it coming down to splitting hairs and you, know, you want to win it on the football field and, and be squarely in so if a &M commerce wins they're in angelo state with a loss to eastern new mexico in overtime last week and then a loss here it'd be two straight losses they would still be eight and three uh, which is a tremendous season for, for the rams this year but because of that loss to eastern new mexico that's why we're thinking it's going to be tougher for them to get in as um, with a loss today versus at A&M Commerce, where if Angelo State wins today, then Commerce's losses are to Tarleton State, who's ranked number one, Colorado State Pueblo, who's safely in, and then Angelo State, who would be safely in with the win. We're not sure, obviously. We'd like to see both teams get in regardless, but it looks like Commerce may have a little more favorable schedule with defeating Eastern New Mexico, something Angelo State did not. Yeah, if we're being prognosticators, you know, an Angelo State team, if they lose today, two straight losses, that doesn't bode well going into the, the decision-making that's going to be announced tomorrow at 4 o'clock. 7-3, the lead for Texas A&M Commerce over Angelo State at the break. Teams beginning their warm-ups in the second half, and we'll have the second half for you shortly here on the Lone Star Conference Game of the Week. San Angelo Police Department is asking for your assistance in helping to reduce vehicle burglaries in our city. We're asking you to remember these three important steps. Lock it. Lock your vehicle anytime you're away from it. Take it. Take your keys and valuable items to include firearms. Hide it. Conceal your belongings in locked compartments out of sight from potential criminals. A locked vehicle is a great deterrent to prevent vehicle burglaries. I'm Mark Zupan, part of the U.S. Paralympic Rugby Team. In my game, movement is everything. I get frustrated when my move is blocked, especially when that guy has no right to be there, even just for a minute. I love a challenge, but I don't like to play this game every day. A message from the United Spinal Association.
Angelo State, Charles, Texas A&M Commerce, 7-3 at the break. And a very special guest joining us, the president of Angelo State, Dr. Brian May. I know you're cheering for a second-half comeback, but win or lose, what a job Jeff Gersh has done in his first year as head coach. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. You know, uh, we, we obviously had Jeff here for many years, and we knew the potential that he had and the, the other staff that he brought in with him have done an amazing job. And we see it in recruiting. Of course, we've seen it in the, in the record we have this year. And I told him when we hired him is that I'm hoping when we play for co play commerce at the end of the season that we're playing for something. And, and so we are. And certainly you are. So yes. The whole athletic program's had a longstanding tradition of success. Why is that so important here? It is important. You know, the, the exposure of athletics, academics is the most important, but athletics is your front door. It gets more exposure than the rest of the school put together. So we try to put winning athletes both in the classroom and in the competition out there. And we average between five and seven conference championships a year. That's important to be high in the Learfield at the end of the year. And that's something we strive for every year. And your student enrollment exceeding 10,000 for the first time. A very nice accomplishment here. Yes, sir. We're the third fastest growing university in the, st in the country uh, of regional institutions. We've gone from 6,300 to 10,5 in the last last six years and uh, I think we'll be well over 11,000 next year and but the Lone Star Conference is a brutal conference we beat each other up but uh, it's an outstanding conference and we put a good product out on the field well, congratulations on your success in the classroom and on the field good luck to your team in the second half thank you very much Dr. Brian May president of Angelo State University second half kickoff to come a strong tradition of academic excellence, a commitment to community, and a rich history of athletic success, the Lone Star Conference has long been known as a leader in intercollegiate athletics. Now with 19 institutions that embody the best in college sports, the Lone Star Conference is the largest and most dynamic conference in NCAA Division II. 19 members strong, 19 members proud. This is the new Lone Star Conference. No one gives you a performance at Carnegie Hall. No one just hands you a PhD in astrophysics or makes you the starting lineman on a championship team. Greatness is achieved through grit. If you're striving to live a life more fulfilling, A&M Commerce will give you that opportunity for we are champions of the determined. We are commerce. We are lions. A strong tradition of academic excellence, a commitment to community, and a rich history of athletic success, the Lone Star Conference has long been known as a leader in intercollegiate athletics. Now with 19 institutions that embody the best in college sports, the Lone Star Conference is the largest and most dynamic conference in NCAA Division II. 19 members strong, 19 members proud. This is the new Lone Star Conference. So here we go, second half about to get underway in this all-important game. Winner of this game, for all intents and purposes, will be playing a playoff game next week in Division Two, and the loser perhaps will still get in, but the odds might be against them. As, as we mentioned last segment, Sioux Falls, Winona State, Dixie State, the three teams in the rankings below are two teams here today. Their games are done, and they have all won. David Solzman, Neil Horn, with you, 7-3. The A&M Commerce lead in the Lions will get the ball first to begin the second half. Get a feeling a turnover could make the difference in this ball game, and again, neither team really able to light it up offensively, so a turnover could very well be the difference. Angelo State, plus 10 in the turnover department. That includes 17 interceptions by their defense. The Lions will have the ball. Of the Kohu return just past the 20 as the third quarter is underway. Miklo Smalls, 8 of 11 passing, 70 yards. He added a 17-yard touchdown run. Lions, 152 total yards, 82 yards on the ground. Well, neither team, again, able to have, I mean, percentage-wise, they did well in the passing game, but this yardage-wise, just not able to get much going there. 
you know, they had, when they did run, each team had a little bit of the success. If you look at, again, for uh, Commerce, that uh, that they got Layla Lay had 35 yards from just six carries, 5.8 yards per carry. So it be interesting to see if either team starts to commit to the run a little more. So Smalls, the Rice transfer, played last year at Independence Community College. Sophomore from Plano awaits the first down snap. Lele Aye gets the first down carry and drive down from behind a short game. Well, both teams' defensive fronts have played really well today. You know, moving side to side, you know, keeping the big play from getting up. You know, they've, they've kept it contained. There have been some decent gains, but nothing really to, to ride home about as far as big ones for big highlights. Angela State's defense allowing just 14 and a half points a game. And that includes allowing just over three yards a carry all year. Lele Yeye now at seven carries, 36 yards. Late blitz, Smalls looking to scramble outside the pocket. And instead of throws it away, he's going to keep it and out of bounds just shy of the 20. Yeah, I thought his athleticism would, would allow him to get down the sideline and it almost did as you saw the speed as he got there. But the Angelo State defender goes a, does a good job of staying right with him and just getting a, enough of a grasp of pulling down. You see Smalls bouncing around. He's very elusive, hard to bring down. Just almost got out of the grasp there of, of the Ram defender. Uh, Hunter Kyle, but un unable to do so. Remember, Jeff Gersh calls Kyle the best linebacker on the Lone Star Conference. He's certainly one of the best. 273 career tackles coming in, and that's speed one reason why. Yeah. Jamal Williams on third and 14. Decent yardage, but shy of the marker. Yeah, just that quick toss, figuring that the Rams were, were loading up to defend the pass, maybe slip through and, and pick up some yardage. They picked up enough yardage, but being third and long, still will have to punt it away into the wind. Good point. This win has picked up since halftime. And so again, both of AM Commerce's punters are back. And it is Ikez punting this away and out of bounds just past midfield. So Angelo State, very good starting field position on their first drive of the second half coming up. Howard College and Angelo State University have joined forces to help you take control of your future. Classes are being offered right now for the Nurse Aid Program at Howard College. The Nurse Aid Program helps students achieve a level of knowledge, skill, and ability essential to providing basic care to residents of long-term care facilities. Clinicals include work-based instruction with close or direct supervision by an instructor. Register today either in person at room 101 or by phone by calling 325-481-8322. This is the place I love There's nowhere better than the place I'm from The Contro makes my world go round I've got my local on oh, The Contro Valley is where I belong K-Fan is everywhere I go Turn it on and it feels right yeah, It feels like home I've got my local on Time, it flies and when you have a lot to take care of, your family, your job, your home, it seems you never have enough. That's why when it comes to health care coverage from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Texas, now is the time to get the coverage your family deserves. Carry the car that's been focused on people in Texas for 90 years. Enroll in a plan today by calling 1-800-488-0200 or visit findbcbstx.com. Plans may be more affordable than you think. Last year, the majority of enrollees qualified for financial assistance. There are options to cover a variety of needs and budgets. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Texas will cover pre-existing conditions and has preventive care at no additional cost to you, which not all plans do. The time is now. Open enrollment ends December 15th. Call 1-800-488-0200. That's 1-800-488-0200. 
Get trusted coverage for the good times, the unexpected times, and all the times in between. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Texas, through it all. A really quick square and saw the defender coming up as well, tried to jump the route, but it was there had he thrown it and led the defender, rather led the receiver. So now third and three. Rams three of eight on third downs in the first half. A four wide set for Sullins. Blitz. Swinging it out. Manning, no chance. Dragged down for the loss. Chris Williams. Rather, I apologize, Jalen Hodge, the junior defensive end from Houston, is the one to bring him down. Hodge does a good job of getting it on the other side of the offensive lineman who then can't block him and runs down Manning for the loss and forces the Rams to punt it away, going three and out. Jared DeFelice has been busy today. Punter for Angelo State. Pressure coming. Depolis hit down to the turf. A flag is down. Kohu on the return from his five. Good room. And staying on his feet past the 35. So it all depends on what this penalty is called. Marcus Thornton, our referee, threw the flag. Running into the kicker, number 25, kicking team. Five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. And so it's running into the kicker, which is why Angelo State will punt again. It's not roughing. The officials were right there. They watched it a long time. They stared down the play as you saw the run in the crash right there and before they threw the flag. We knew the flag was coming, but then the debate comes running into the five yard or the roughing 15 yards. And that's a critical call because it's still going to be fourth down. But because of the Kohu return, Jeff Gersh, of course, decides to punt it again. And Kohu is back right around his own 10. Went to the back of DeFelice. Oh, careful. Well, he just gets this off, and this is not bad considering how he handled the snap. From the eight. Flag down. Kohu thrown down shy of the 15, and this is probably going to be moved back even more. Yeah, so this is a big break for the Rams with the penalty, even though they didn't get the first down. The, the change in the field position after the first During Kohu the return, return. Illegal block in the back, number one, receiving team. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down, Texas A&M Commerce. Lions are going to have it inside their own five. Right there, was, you could see the first wave, the first blocker down, got him in the back, and then Kohu, he's been able to break some tackles, it's wrestled down, even though it didn't really matter because of the penalty. But, you know, what what depth that Commerce has in the return game, you know, Dominic Ramsey, the All-American kick returner out this game, and Kohu's done a well of a job on the return so far today. In fact, his punt return set up Commerce for a short field. They just had to go 54 yards for their touchdown late in the first quarter. David Salzman, Neil Horn with you from San Angelo. Commerce from their own four. And Lily Aye gets five on first down. Darian Taylor, the defensive back, does a good job of filling the hole as Lily Lay. If you watch him, had a hole there for a moment. And watch the 25. He just shadows him. And then as he cut back over to the other side, Taylor's right there to dive and make the tackle after a short game. AM Commerce has been ranked in 62 straight AFCA Division II polls. They're barely in it right now at number 23. That is the sustained success they've had. To the ground again. Maybe a yard shy of the marker. Lily A.A. on the second down carry. Weston Bauer, number 94, on the tackle there for Angelo State. He's out of Brady. It's, he's out here in the West Texas area as well. So, again, the Rams trying to recruit this area and get a good establishment of their base of players from the West Texas area, and they can fill in with others from around the state. Third and one, Jamal Williams at tailback. So 
Ball sends Williams in motion. This is the play they scored the touchdown on. Rams, though, there this time, and I believe Smalls is shy of the marker. Well, you hit it on the nail. David, I was thinking the same thing. They split three out to one side, move the running back to spread it out even more, looking like a bubble screen, and then just the quarterback draw from Smalls. Rams say, we've seen this. We know what to do. How about Devin Washington? He first moved up, which forced Smalls inside, and then Washington, the junior from Jacksonville, Florida, made the tackle. And so against a strong wind, the two punters back at the goal line. Vikez. Very decent commerce roll. But again, Angelo State, good starting field position to come. Can any offense break through? We haven't seen a point since late in the first quarter. Ashley Home Store's Black Friday sale is going on now. Get up to 50% off or get 0% interest for six years with no minimum purchase. For a limited time only at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Ashley Home Store. This is home. The San Angelo Police Department is asking for your assistance in helping to reduce vehicle burglaries in our city. We're asking you to remember these three important steps. Lock it. Lock your vehicle anytime you're away from it. Take it. Take your keys and valuable items to include firearms. Hide it. Conceal your belongings in locked compartments out of sight from potential criminals. A locked vehicle is a great deterrent to prevent vehicle burglaries. Ashley Home Store's Black Friday sale is going on now. Get up to 50% off or get 0% interest for six years with no minimum purchase. For a limited time only at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Ashley Home Store. This is home. David Salzman, Neil Horn with you. I think one reason why we're still at 7-3 with 9.09 to go in the third quarter I don't remember a big play by either offense in quite a long time. No, you're exactly right. No big plays. But also, you begin to wonder if the imports of this game, winner in the playoffs, loser on the bubble, you know, if they're also being a little tentative and conservative as well. Longest Angelo State play, 15 yards on a reception by Cullen Pichot. Negative yardage for Manning. That is the sixth tackle for loss by this A&M Commerce defense. Even though the initial defender for the Lions unable to ramp up Manning, he did cause him to have to bounce it back deeper right there, you see. And Manning still unable to get outside as the pursuit runs him down for the loss of three. Manning, 13 carries, 53 yards. Pachot, 26 yards receiving the most on the Rams today. Blitz. And off his back foot, Sullins throws it incomplete, Manning the closest Ram to the football. Rams had every, all the receivers flooding outside, uh, down the field, and tried to slip the receiver or the running back out down underneath for the screen, but the rush was just there simply too soon. You know, those offensive linemen are supposed to hit a block and hold it for just a second. They didn't get to hold it even for a second, and so Sullins had to get rid of it early. Again, their longest offensive play has been 15. They need 13 to extend this drive. Going deep, two receivers there and just out of the reach of Thomas. Well, Sullins had time that on that play, but the receiver unable to just break open. Thomas was well covered. But you'll see the blitz coming by Commerce up the middle, and the Rams do a good job of picking it up. Gave Sullins time to really step into that throw, but you see Thomas well covered. It would have taken a perfect pass, and even that might have been knocked down. So Defelice again. His sixth punt coming up. He's averaged just over 39 yards a punt so far today. Gets this high in the air, and Kahu lets it go, and that just avoided hitting his foot into the end zone for a touchback. Yeah, he's looking around thinking maybe the uh, gunners coming down might have interfered with this opportunity to make the catch. But actually, they're fortunate that it got in this. So let's watch this and see real closely. Calls for the fair catch. 
No, nope, he just missed it. And I don't know if he did it on purpose, stepping, let it bounce past him, because you know the rule is generally you do not catch it inside the ten, and that worked out well for the Lions, either, whether it was on purpose or not. And you saw just how close the football did come to his foot. All right, 8:18 to go, third quarter. Still no scoring since late in the first. Miklo Smalls has been held in check since that 17 yard touchdown run. That gave his team a 7 3 lead. He'll look to throw. Plenty of time. Can't find anyone downfield. And a good run as he scrambles, hopping over a defender as well. Well, the Lions went max protection. They had two tight ends. They were trying to hit the long ball, maybe somebody else underneath. But once the protection broke down, Smalls does what he does best, breaks it out of the pocket, and just, as you said, just kind of sidesteps or hurdles a, a tackler to pick up positive yardage of about six. Hunter Kyle is everywhere. He, again, was the Ram defender closest to the play. He is already up to 14 tackles. Had 13 in each of his last two games. Off the back foot, passes short, almost intercepted. Angelo State almost had their 18th pick as a defense this year. Letty French got a hand on it, but waiting behind him with good coverage was J.C. Ural, number 29. So this one, Lions are very fortunate. This doesn't end up a pick. It's just enough over the up defender. He can't get there and not far enough for the back defender, number 25, Ural, to get a hand on it. So. Smalls took a shot there and not maybe a good one. French has over 200 tackles in his career. No interceptions this season. <laughs> Got close to his first. Again, Smalls pressure. He needs four on the scramble, won't get there. What a tackle, Donovan Jackson, the junior from here in San Angelo. Credit the defensive secondary, really, though, for stopping that one as none of the Lion receivers were able to break open. So Smalls had nowhere to go with this one, and he's, he's recognized it early, so tries to do it himself. And again, the Rams staying with good technique, staying in their lanes, and there's Donovan Jackson with a nice tackle. What performances by these defenses? We just don't see it that often from two defenses in the college football game nowadays. Only thing we're missing are the leather helmets here this afternoon. <laughs> Devin Washington lets this go. And the Rams will have it ahead of their own 30. Well, Jeff Gersh, of course, the Rams head coach, was their former defensive coordinator. That's what he hangs his hat on. But again, he's emphasizing and it is showing through the way the Rams are playing today. And he had high praise when we talked to him earlier this week for his new defensive coordinator, Adam Clark. He was an All-American linebacker with Clark at St. Ambrose University when Gersh was the coach there. That Gersh was the coach at St. Ambrose for 18 years before making his way down to San Angelo. So he got, you know, he got his own uh, disciple to, to follow him here and, and knew he had the, the defense in good hands. It was going to be handled the way he wanted. And Gersh says actually now he's turned his attention a little more to the offense, having been more of a defensive coach in the past. Sullen's on the quick out. The show's third catch. Rams ran a clear out with Austin Landry, 19, clearing out down the sideline. He's the, the receiver running down there, and they were hoping that the defense would all follow him. Instead on the out, they are able to pick up seven yards. I believe that's the biggest game for Angela State this half. Sullins. Hit as he throws, and it sails towards the Commerce sideline. Elijah Earls, the junior from San Antonio, providing the pressure. And I think they're looking at this, that pass. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Even though he got hit, the ball, I thought, went backwards. Doesn't matter that he was hit, so that's a backward pass. And most people will call it a lateral, but it's technically a backward pass. So the ball is marked back to where it went out of bounds. Though so good eyes there, and David Bailiff was right on it as well. And it's a line of a loss of four, now third and 12. I 
Again, pressure. Plenty of room for Sullins this time, who dives forward and he's just short. He's about a yard shy of the first down marker. Well, the Lions were running a stud on the front, and they're putting pressure. Unfortunately, when they ran it, it put everybody in the middle. That allowed Sullins to go outside. See how they all got caught up in the middle, and Sullins scrambling out to the left side and needed that one block out there from Thomas and couldn't quite get it to pick up the first down. Heck of an effort. Payne Sullins, grad transfer from Texas Tech. He's getting his MBA here at Angelo State. Both these quarterbacks held in check. We have 134 passing yards total. This takes a very good Angelo State bounce. Tiff Felice was angling this toward the sideline, and then he gets about 20 more yards out of it on the bounce, and Commerce will have it from its own seven. Which offense can break through? No one gives you a performance at Carnegie Hall. No one just hands you a PhD in astrophysics or makes you the starting lineman on a championship team. Greatness is achieved through grit. If you're striving to live a life more fulfilling, A&M Commerce will give you that opportunity. For we are champions of the determined. We are Commerce. We are Lions. David Salzman, Neil Horn with you. Yeah, you know, sometimes you see games with plenty of yards and the teams, the offenses just aren't able to complete their opportunities. I mean, but that's not the case here. Uh, yards so hard to come by. The last chance at a score, decent chance, was a missed field goal late in the second quarter by AM Commerce. Uh, there hasn't been much to show for it by either of these offenses. Angelo State has not even seen the red zone so far today. Miklo Smalls, without a completion this half, will look for his first here. Going deep and incomplete. Ryan Stokes, the intended receiver. Well, he saw the corner fell down, but luckily the safety was coming over for the Rams. And, you know, to continue the thought you just had, David, is we, we'll see the replay uh, of this last one. Both quarterbacks, percentage-wise, are having a good game before this miss by Smalls. He was hitting 75% of his passes, and Payne Sullins was hitting just over 61% of his, his passes. So from a percentage standpoint, they've had a good passing day, but yardage? Man, it's just so hard to get 70 yards for Smalls through the air, just 64 for Sullins as the defenses have rallied in and not allowed those deep passes to go in. Lions up 17 yards this quarter. Short gain on second down. Lily Aye. You know, the running games have had trouble getting established. You know, they've uh, averaged per carry. You know, they are pretty good. You know, for Manning, for Angelo State, 4.1 per carry. And for, after that one by Laley A.A., he's averaging 5.1. So, you know, average-wise, they're also doing well. But neither team's just really gotten into an offensive flow. Yeah, no big plays. Uh, the biggest plays for Commerce, 21-yard catch, Chance Cooper, 22-yard run, Darian Owens. But those came in the first quarter. Make a small 17-yard touchdown run late in the first quarter. Lely A.A. with a flag down. This is going to be a hold, and Angelo State makes the stop anyway. Yeah, probably declining this penalty as they were all over it. And we're talking about how the offense has just never got underway, so we'll hear this penalty. Holding number 71 offense. The penalty is declined. It's fourth down. But the reason the offenses are not getting going, the defenses have really rallied to the ball today. They've just have been all over it. These are two offenses coming in. Commerce averaging 38 points a game and Angelo State averaging 37. 
It's a nice day. It's a, a fairly strong wind. I shouldn't alter the offense. I mean, it's a great point. I mean, these defenses have been lights out. Vikes is going to hold up in the wind, but take a commerce bounce. It's going to be the third time this quarter that Angela State started to drive right around here, just shy of the 50. Yeah, they just need to get a little something going to at least get in the, into that red zone area to have a shot to put some points on the board. But you know, it, it's a little bit like each, each team's just kind of feeling each other out, a little, a little bit of a fight going on, just jab, jab, jab. And at some point, somebody's got, got to land that right hook and knock somebody out. Trick play coming? Could be. Could be. In this game, we cannot understate the importance. The winner, for all intents and purposes, will be playing in the playoffs next week. The loser may be out. Commerce a little more of a case than Angelo State. If Commerce loses, Kiki Chisholm the catch. Angelo State will take that, though, a gain of about seven on first down. Sullen showing the, showing the strong arm there. That's a long pass across the field on a quick slant. It's got to be right on time, as you see, he splits the defenders for the completion. Second catch for Chisholm. Now 58 on the year, third in the Lone Star. Manning, this is the first down, past the Commerce 40. Yeah, Manning's not hit you know, right at the line or the backfield. Uh, he gets, once he gets some uh, momentum going downhill, and we see him the ball game, kind of counting home that left arm like something's going on there. But once he's able to get going, he's been able to pick up some pretty decent yardage. So Manning comes out. We have not seen Lloyd Howard the third at tailback with 546 yards rushing this year. So Caleb King now, the senior from Fort Worth, is in the backfield. He'll get the first down carry and wrapped up right away. Yeah, he doesn't have the size of Manning. As Manning's 230-pounder, King, though, just at 5'6", 181, is running between the tackles there in the big defensive line for Commerce, able to bring him down. Chris Williams, the tackle, is a good story. He got in trouble at Louisville, was kicked off the team in 2017, made his way here to Commerce, and David Bailiff says he's done nothing but work hard, maintain his grades. He says he's his best on the defensive front. Good comeback story, Chris Williams. Take the king. Going deep, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and a flag down. I'm not sure this may be offense, but I'm not sure the defender ever turned around, so this may be face guarding. He was face guarding, but I think you have a good point. He I had hit Chisholm. position. Yep, Chisholm makes the contact. Yeah, if he just turns around, I don't think he gets the penalty. He had position, but since he never turned around, he kept the, the offensive player from going and reaching the ball. Seventh Commerce penalty. Angelo State has not been called for a penalty today. Now for the Commerce 24. Payne Sullins and the Ram offense have something going. Manning is back in. Takes a lick and gains close to four. You know, when he left a few plays ago, that arm dangling down, but he's right back in. Must have been a stinger. And he's back in now. And they'll try to pound him inside a little bit, soften up the defense a little more. See right here. Tough going inside, but he, he finishes off the runs pretty well. So many games between the top teams of the Lone Star have been low scoring and close. No exception here. Manning, about four more yards. Angelo State won at West Texas A&M, 17-14. Of course, Angelo lost at Eastern New Mexico in overtime last week, 20 to 17. Now this a tough call for the Rams, third and three. Kind of in that area, do they run Manning again or they put it in the air? Fake to Manning, Sullins keeps. Crunch down to the turf, no gain. Well, a good play by the defense for Commerce. Now you're focusing on Manning off the nice play fake. And here comes up the linebacker to make the finish off Sullins, stopping short of the first down. 
Neil, the offense is still on the field. Yep. You don't take the points here? They have to run a play. There's about a 10 second difference between the play clock and the game clock. Yeah, fourth and three. I'm, I'm like you, David. I'm almost like you got the win. You won't have the win next quarter. But this is a big fourth down gamble right here. Five on the play clock. They go for it. Sullins incomplete. And so Jeff Gersh rolls the dice. A field goal would have made it a one-point game. Instead, deciding to go for it, and Commerce holds. Sullins was locked in on Lawson Ayu. Excuse me, this is Kiki Chisholm on the left side and just threw it behind him, a back shoulder throw. Unfortunately, threw it too far behind him, and Chisholm unable to come back and get it, so the Rams give it up on downs. Connor Flanagan had made a 42-yarder earlier today. Last week in that loss to Eastern New Mexico, he had a 39-yarder blocked, and he missed a 29-yarder in overtime. And I'm still surprised we didn't see him. Miklo Smalls off his back foot towards the sideline and almost intercepted. Devin Washington almost had his eighth pick of the year. Just got the pass off a little late. Tyler Geis, the big 6'3", 250-pound senior tied in, number 11, initially broke free, but Smalls unable to get it there as the defender is able to make up some ground. Ball floated a little bit into the wind, and again, almost intercepted by the Rams on what could have been a big play for Commerce. We've seen that a couple of times. Smalls isn't stepping into his throws off his back foot against this strong wind. That's dangerous. Nine of 15 passing, 71 yards, and he's almost had a couple of throws picked this quarter. Much easier throw this time. Oh, what a hard lick and a flag down. That hit was out of bounds. End of the third quarter. Off the Cooper catch. Rather, the Keelan Smith reception, Angelo State picks up its first penalty of the game, and it'll be 15 yards. Yeah, it's a big one as we end the thir third quarter. Coming down the stretch, final 15 minutes upcoming. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit number 46, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That foul happened after the end of the third quarter. Timeout on the field. Fourth quarter to come, and a big one on San Angelo. Everything in life changes. Well, almost everything, because price for life from Suddenlink never changes. Get Altis One plus internet for just $54.99 a month for life. You heard that right. The same price for life. Call 855-421-4585 now, and you'll get over 200 channels. A voice-activated remote, 4K Ultra HD, and 100 meg internet with unlimited data available, all included. Plus, right now, you'll get a $100 Amazon.com gift card. All this for just $54.99 a month for life. Switch careers, same price. Start a family, same price. No matter how life changes, $54.99 will always be $54.99. All with no annual contracts. Already stuck in a contract? We'll give you up to $500 when you switch. Get Altis One for $54.99 a month for life. Call 855-421-4585 or visit suddenlink.com today. All Tees One, only at Sudden Lake. Welcome back to San Angelo and quite a big fourth quarter, not just for these two teams, but for Sioux Falls, ranked number eight in the latest regional rankings. Of course, the top seven will make the Division II playoffs, which begin next week. The Angelo State wins. Just our personal opinion, we think Commerce has a better case than Sioux Falls, even though they won earlier today at Wayne State, blowing them out. But if Commerce is able to win, it may be tough for Angelo State to get in. We'll hope both can get in. But whoever wins this game is going to be playing next week in the postseason. David Salzman, Neil Horn with you. Fourth quarter begins after the personal foul on Angelo State, their first penalty of the game from the 40. Not much doing for Darian Owens on the Jets' week. Getting about three. Well, they'll give him about four. Buddy French does a good job for the Rams, holding his position instead of chasing the ball. He's able to make the, the tackle out on the edge after this Jets' week. 
Darian Owens with the ball. Total yards. This is how much of a defensive struggle this has been. A&M Commerce 176, Angelo State 150. We've had 11 tackles for loss combined. Seven by the Lion defense. Small's in trouble, sacked. Fourth sack by the Lions, J.C. Euro, the senior strong safety, starting for the injured Derek Dickerson, gets his first sack of the year. Once again, no one opening up quickly enough for Smalls, and the pocket just collapsing as the Rams were getting there, and then the, the blitz from the defensive secondary, J.C. Euro getting there for the sack. First down marker is right at the 50. Third down 11. Blitz. Catch made. The biggest offensive play by AM Commerce this half. Gives Smalls all sorts of credit. He had pressure right in his face, and he steps up and fires probably his best pass of the afternoon for the first down completion. Arnez Archie, sophomore from spring on the reception. Another catch. This is Geis, the senior tight end. Brought down at the Ram 25. And the Lions, you know, they went a little up-tempo after that last completion. Maybe feeling like, hey, let's let's go a little quicker. And you see here, they barely huddle. And feeling it right now, maybe the momentum has shifted their way. They're going to try to take advantage of it. Lily A.A., defender right there. Oh, what a nice play by the defensive tackle for the Rams, Weston Bauer. Two passes for Miklos Smalls, putting the Lions in this position. Again, nice out after the pressure right in Smalls' head, and then again after the, the quick snap, they're able to go the other way and get further, even deeper into Rams' territory. Then the loss of two on the carry for Lely A.A. Lions with the wind here in the fourth. Second and long. Another blitz. Smalls double coverage in the end zone, tipped away. Oh, the nice play at the last moment because it looked like Smalls really put it right where it needed to be. Again, as you said, the blitz, and they got just enough time to get some air under that. Looking for his big receiver, Ryan Stokes. And at the last moment, watch the defender come over there and just get a hand on it as he goes up high and makes the tag. We've called the name of Letty French a bunch, and he makes a big tip right there. Jeff Gersh calls French a student of the game. As a freshman, honorable mention all-conference, he's over 200 tackles in his career. Big pass break up there to set up third and long. Lily A.A., the handoff, and good running room. Lost the football. Angelo State has it. Was Lely A.A. marked down? Wow. Ram football. Wow. We said that turnovers could make the difference. You see Lely A.A. takes a couple of pops. Still has the ball right there, but here, if you're looking, they're looking to strip it. Uh, it just pops out as his rear is almost hitting the ground. That that would probably be reviewed, but we do not have review here right. in Division Two. And I know Daly, David Bailiff of Commerce is a big proponent that there should be reviews, and that was one that probably would have been. And it was French after the pass breakup there, stripping Lele Yeye of the football, and Christian Brown, junior from Bakersfield, California, with the recovery. That is the 25th force turnover for Angelo State this year. Still 7-3. Sullins stays on his feet. Able to get past the 10. And right around the original line of scrimmage. Now, a lot of coaches like to go for a big play after a turnover. The Rams were going to try to do that. It just wasn't there as the pocket collapsed quickly. And Sullins fortunate to be able to get back to the line of scrimmage. 
So both teams in the red zone on their last drive but come up empty. Angelo State going for it on fourth down. And there the Lily AA fumble. It has been 7-3 since a Miklo Smalls touchdown run with 18 seconds to go in the first. Sullins looking for Chisholm, has him past the 30. Well, that's where the underthrown pass comes in handy because the the uh, offensive player or the receiver is looking back at the quarterback. He sees it's underthrown, wants to put on the brakes and come back and make the nice catch by Kiki Chisholm. Third catch of the game for Chisholm. That is biggest, 19 yards. That's the biggest play from scrimmage for Angelo State today. Short gain on the first down carry. You know they'll keep passing the number three. Kiki Chisholm, junior from Dangerfield. Over 150 catches in his career coming in. Third in the conference this season in receptions and receiving yards. Well, both teams have really been bringing pressure either with the four-man or even with the blitz. Sullins pressured, finds Chisholm again. Tripped up shy at the 35, good tackle. Just a gain of a couple, that was Williams. Lions were getting there with the pressure, just the four-man rush, and Sullins does a good job of just before it gets hit, getting it away to his receiver, Kiki Chisholm. Watch this, just about to get tackled, and just gets it away as as Chisholm does the right thing, sees his quarterback in trouble and scrambles open for the reception. We're under 10 minutes to go now. Third down for the Ram offense. First down marker just past the 40. <laughs> Tipped away. That was just behind Chisholm. Kohu right there. Yeah, they've got man coverage out on the edge as Angelo State split two receivers left and Commerce going with straight man, two, two defenders out there so they can bring the blitz and the pass just off the mark, as you said, behind the receiver and incomplete. Right, a pass right in the chest is probably caught. Mm -hmm. And so another punt against the wind here. Jared DeFelice, his eighth punt of the game coming up. Wentz going to hold this up. He'll take a pretty nice Angelo State roll. And Commerce will have it right around the 25. A defensive struggle continues. We've been 7-3 for a long while. I was driving to the Shannon ER, was having chest pains, and I didn't make it to the parking lot, and I wound up hitting three cars. One of the supervisors and two nurses that were there rushed to the scene. Three arteries were blocked, which caused a massive heart attack. I cannot say enough about my doctor, Dr. Haddad. He saved my life. After my procedure, my heart is back to normal. I just feel happy that I'm alive. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man. The selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man. Let's put a ride home. David Salzman, Neil Horn with you. 9.25 to go. You know, our graphics man back in the truck, he hasn't had to do much with that score in a, almost a couple of hours. 7-3, A&M Commerce with the lead. Now, Angelo State came up with the turnover. Their defense did on Commerce's last drive, and it feels like, Neil, they're going to have to do it again because the yards on both ends have been so hard to come by. Yeah, you feel like this drive's a critical one for Angelo. they got to get a stop. Jamal Williams on the carry. Keeps churning those legs. Just converted from linebacker a month ago. Would have first down yardage, but there's a flag down. Holding number 85, offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's first down. 
spotted a foul was around the 40. Chance Cooper's call for this penalty. Yeah, again, we've talked about the former linebacker does a good job of running, and there's the block or the hold right in front of that as well. Great camera work, guys. As you could easily see Cooper hold Devin Washington. Ball me back to the 30. As the eighth penalty against Commerce today for 71 yards. First and five. Williams in trouble, gets away, able to get a couple of yards. And here comes a late flag in as well. Hunter Kyle was one of the Rams there. This is on Angelo State. Players and coaches, personal the foul, think so. face mask, number 93, defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. Automatic first down. Again, the big 330-pound nose guard, Jadarius Colbert. Does a good job of pursuing. But right there, you see, with the left hand, reached up, got a hold of the cage. Doesn't matter, really, if you yank it anymore. Is if you get any part of it, the flag's going to come. Great camera work again. That's just the second Angelo State penalty. Both have been personal fouls. Look how overloaded they are to the left side. A five-wide set. Williams in the backfield. Smalls is going to go the opposite way, and the catch made. So we wonder when maybe the trick play would come. I don't know if that counts as one, but Keelan Smith was wide open after that odd formation. Yeah, first time we've seen that formation all day. Again, it stood out. They overloaded one side and then ran everyone down, and the one receiver crossing over breaks open for the pass. Williams, another strong run. All the way to the 21, he gains eight. Remember, he was a linebacker a month ago, converted to running back because of how banged up Commerce's backfield has been this year. Let's go back to the previous play. Again, look, three go down, and one of them sneaks over to the right side and gets the pass that puts the Lions in good field position. Williams again. And, well, he can't turn his legs if he's lifted up into the air. <laughs> it's going to be about third down and one. Well, this is critical right now for Angelo State. They've got to hold Commerce to, at best, just a field goal attempt because a touchdown, the way this game's going, may put them out of reach. Big low smalls, quietly, 132 yards through the air. That 17-yard touchdown late in the first quarter is still holding up. Low snap. I think Smalls recovered. But it's going to be fourth down, and David Bailiff's going to send out the field goal unit. Yeah, right call here. You know, you make it at least a seven-point edge if you can hit this one. In the way this game's going, you know, seven points is like a Grand Canyon for either ball, one of these ball clubs right now. So Jake Piquez is five of five this year on field goals of 40 yards or more. This is right at 40. He's got it. And a huge fist pump from the junior kicker from Rockwall. 10-3 Lions. Winner is going to be in the playoffs next week.
Wanted, like new or vintage Christmas ornaments and decorations for the 5th Annual Decorations for Death Sale. Gather your Christmas decorations and donate them at the First Community Federal Credit Union by Monday, November the 25th. All those who donate will be entered into a drawing for a $25 gift card. The sale will be Saturday, December the 7th at First Community Federal Credit Union from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. For more information, please call Vicki Loso at 224-3607. We're Mark, Richard, and Jerry from the band OAR on a mission for America's paralyzed veterans. We want the best for our families, but what if your brother were paralyzed in the Iraq war and couldn't get the care benefits he needed? Or your daughter was disabled serving her country, keeping her from securing a job? These veterans need our help. We've joined Paralyzed Veterans of America's Mission Able to help wounded veterans get what they need, care, benefits, and jobs. So join the mission at mission-able.com, a public service of Paralyzed Veterans of America. Our first point since late in the first quarter. Touchback. Does Angelo State have 75 yards in them? Obviously, Neil, no touchdowns for the Ram offense here today, but coming in an offense averaging just under 37 points a game. Yeah, they've, they've sputtered today. A lot of that give credit to the Commerce defense, but... Again, they've shown flashes. You know, they've gotten the running game every once in a while going with Davin Manning going. He's got 68 yards on the ground, averaging just under four per game. You know, and Payne Sullins, as far as percentage-wise, not doing that bad. Nine of 31 for, through the air, but just 93 yards. The big passing plays have not been there. 173 total yards for the Rams. 51 this half. Sullins in trouble, sacked right away. Yeah, we said earlier that both defensive lines are really applying the pressure. Right now, the uh, the Lions are just pinning the ears back and going after the passer. They know the situation with less than six minutes left, and the Rams down by a touchdown. They can just really go after it and making good penetration and beating the block there for the tackle for the Lions with Jalen Hodge. Fifth sack of the year. Again, pressure. Hodge gets Sullins again. Wow, he's just wearing out the left tackle right now. Getting, he, he made an inside move last time. That time he beats him to the outside and just stone cold rushes the quarterback and drags him down for another sack. Blake Harrison has been beaten twice. Those are the first two sacks for Commerce today, and Harrison replaced by Marcus Johnson at left tackle. Yeah, the speed rush. Pays off dividends, now it's third and long. Sullen's buying time. Going deep, a man is open and incomplete, flag down. That's a case of Sullen's couldn't quite get it there into the wind, but it may pay off with a pass interference call. Landry was open initially as the ball was released, but the wind held it up and yet Rams may get away with it. Now, there are two flags in the backfield as well. This could be offsetting. Uh, you see our camera work very clearly shows that the uh, defender, L.A. Dawson, was there too early on the play. So that's a definite pass interference. But they end up flags fouls back on there. The play. An eligible receiver downfield, number 74, offense. Pass interference, defense. The penalty's offset. Replay third down. That's Pierre Leonard down for Commerce. So Injury timeout on the field. Even though Angelo State won't be able to take that penalty because Sullins was able to find time and get the ball downfield, the offsetting penalties at least means that the Rams will have another chance. The ineligible man were the linemen for, for the Rams releasing early. And again, that's because Sullen was flushed from the pocket. And they've got... An internal time clock inning, knowing that at some point there would probably be a run, and one of the, the linemen finally released and got down too far down the field, at, and then the pass was thrown. The big man walking off the field on his own power, Pierre Leonard, 5'10", 300. Senior from Tyler. He and Devin Demon have split time at nose so far today. Another chance on third down for Angelo State. Lions just bring four. Sullins, incomplete. Well, as you said, they brought four, but they, they've liked to run the stunt. They keep doing that up front. 
allowed Sullins at least to slide outside, but just nothing going for his receivers down the field. Watch this. Again, you see they come up the middle on the stunt, and Sullins, once he breaks outside the pocket, but can't find an open receiver. So Jared DeFelice's ninth punt. He'll catch this deep snap in the end zone. 4.56 left, both teams three timeouts remaining. We're on the visitor's side broadcasting, and in front of us, everyone coming off the field for Commerce is going up to number 93, Jalen Hodge, and giving him a high five. <laughs> Two sacks on that drive. And now the Lions will have the ball in Rams territory. 4.47 for David Bailiff's Lions to try to hold on and make the playoffs for the fifth straight year. Commerce lead, 447 to go. David Salzman, Neil Horn with you. Now, one thing to think about, Neil, a field goal makes it a two-score game, which in a game like this would seem insurmountable. Commerce, the wind at its back, and they have a tremendous kicker, especially from deep. And Jake Viquez, who connected from 40 yards on Commerce's last drive. But you got to figure what they want to do is milk clock more than anything, which is 447 left. Smalls, which of all Williams, the lead block is tripped up, maybe a gain of one. Yeah, that's what you want to do is put it in your best offensive player's hands. But again, the Rams deny much of a gain. To this point, neither team is over 200 yards in offense. With that uh, short game by Smalls, the uh, Lions are at 197 yards. Angelo State just 161 yards total offense today. Rams not using a timeout yet again. Both teams with three as we approach four minutes remaining. Williams. Big hole. Still going. Jamal Williams trying to ice it. First and goal. What a run by the former linebacker. Deep toss, which, watch this, deep toss, you just hope that's not fumbled, and then gets a great block on the edge, then bursts through some tacklers, and then it's a foot race, gets run down inside the 10, which is still not that bad for the Lions because the clock is rolling. That is our biggest offensive play by either team today. 40 yards for a man who played linebacker for a and Commerce just a month ago. Lions again milking all the time they can. Play clock down to three. Smalls wisely throws it out of bounds. Yeah, they're hoping to go ahead and cash in, catch maybe the Rams by surprise, everyone loading up for the run. That does stop the clock with 3.18 left to play, so the Rams get to hold on to one of their three remaining timeouts. I think good point, but expect a run here and on third down? Yeah, I, I would think so. And, you know, you got to figure maybe Smalls comes into that equation at some point as well. You know, any type of score right here for Commerce probably puts just about the final nail in the coffin. Here's Williams again, cutting it inside. 
He's had every carry on the ground for Commerce since the Lindley Yeye fumble. We haven't seen Lindley Yeye since. And what a job Williams has done. He is up to over 70 yards on the ground today. And watch this again. Former linebacker kind of lowers the head and falls forward. And once this ball is snapped, we'll be to only about two and a half minutes left to play, except we're going to get a timeout for an injured ram. Injury timeout on the field. Player down in the end zone. A lot of times in these situations, you'll see a team like Angelo State take timeouts already. But with the way the offense has been limited to just three points, I imagine that's why Jeff Kirsch is thinking, I, I need all the timeouts for my offense. That's J.C. Euro perhaps cramping up. He's starting a strong safety. And he's starting a strong safety for the injured Derek Dickerson. Dickerson, one of the Rams' best defensive players. Kahari Watson should replace Euro now at strong safety. You've your freshman from Keller. Right now, like Lineal, it's about stopping this third down run if you're Angelo State. Yeah, they've got to get a stop and then just pray somehow that a field goal attempt is no good. Again, already down by seven with 2.48 in the clock rolling now. If they keep them out of the end zone, I would presume Angelo would use one of their timeouts. Commerce can get it down to under 215. Old traditional I formation with Smalls under center. Lofting it to the end zone. Touchdown. Yeah, the Rams have to sell out, and that allows the tight end for the Lions to sneak out in the right corner. And Tyler Geis, the big 6'3", 250-pound senior tight end, is all alone as he leaks out into the right corner. His third touchdown catch of the season has put this away for AM Commerce. And assuming they hold on, they'll reach the playoffs for the fifth straight season. Four straight playoff birds coming in, the third longest streak in the nation. Vikas kicks the extra point through. A&M Commerce, likely two minutes, 17 seconds away from another postseason berth. David Solzman, Neil Horn from San Angelo. Even if Angelo State loses and they are just on the outside looking in at the Division II playoffs, what a job Jeff Gersh has done in his first season as head coach here. Absolutely. You know, you, it, it's always one of those things you look back and say, what ifs, if, and, or buts. And uh, no last week's Eastern New Mexico loss is going to be one of those that they're going to look back on. But again, you got to take steps to build a program to, to the consistency you want to of a winning program. And uh, you've got to feel that Angel is sitting in good, in good shape after this season. Yeah, Jeff Kerr says we need to get used to this type of success. And, you know, a lot of times you see in games like this where it comes down to clutch plays, a team with more of that experience in this situation comes through. And no doubt that's Commerce. National champs two seasons ago. And looking like they're about to make the playoffs for the fifth straight time. 
2.11 to go. Rams do have all three of their timeouts left, but obviously no touchdowns on the board yet today, and they need two to have any hope. Flag is down, as you see in the middle of the field. Personal foul, illegal blindside block. Number 29, receiving team. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down, Angelo State. Just the third penalty on the Rams today, but again, with just 2-11 left to play, may, may, not, may not make any difference anyway. This Commerce defense has held Angelo State to 161 total yards. Just 68 of them on the ground. Angelo State is 3 of 14 on third downs. And they're averaging under five yards a completion. That is extremely low. Manning tripped up right away as he makes the grab, and he felt that one. Clock stops. Now Manning's played well today. We see him on the ground, 18 brushes, 68 yards, 3.8 coverage. And again, he is a low to watch again this low tackle. As he catches it out in the right flat, hit the defender right on the knee, what it looks like. That's Dawson on the tackle. Yeah, it's clean, but yeah, as you saw, that low tackle. And man, he got the force of that one. And you mentioned he's from here in San Angelo, a sophomore, went to Central High School. He had gone to West Texas A&M at a high school and then left. He was out of football for a year. Mm -hmm. Came back home and has been one of the bright spots in this Angelo State rushing attack. He also had two touchdowns last week, the only touchdowns of the game in that loss to Eastern New Mexico. Well, we hope the young man is, is okay here, but he's got a bright future for the hometown Rams. You know, after being a Bobcat at Central High School, and again, we hope Angelo State will still get in as the seventh seed if they fall here. If this is the end of their year, there's a bright future here. You know, Manning back, Kiki Chisholm, Pichot, Landry, their three of their best wideouts are, are all back. You know, Larry Johnson, a junior from Fort Worth, one of their better wideouts to begin the year, got hurt in week two. And even though Payne Sullins will no longer be their quarterback, Jeff Gersh is high on the man who he feel could replace him. We'll take a timeout here in San Angelo. No one gives you a performance at Carnegie Hall. No one just hands you a PhD in astrophysics or makes you the starting lineman on a championship team. Greatness is achieved through grit. If you're striving to live a life more fulfilling, A&M Commerce will give you that opportunity for we are champions of the determined. We are commerce, we are lions. A strong tradition of academic excellence, a commitment to community, and a rich history of athletic success, the Lone Star Conference has long been known as a leader in intercollegiate athletics. Now with 19 institutions that embody the best in college sports, the Lone Star Conference is the largest and most dynamic conference in NCAA Division II. 19 members strong, 19 members proud. This is the new Lone Star Conference. Devon Manning has just been helped up, and as you can see, is not going to be helped off the field, and, and I imagine be taken back to the Angelo State locker room after taking that hard low hit on the pass grab on, on first down. And, well, you can tell he is still feeling it. Bright young man, as you mentioned, with a bright young future for this Angelo State squad. The story has been A&M Commerce's defense and then Clutch plays by the offense here in the fourth. Bubble. 
for Alizé Thomas, and not much doing there. Rams have three timeouts left, but they are not using them. Yeah, Lions just rallied to the ball. In fact, both teams have done an excellent job of just rallying to the ball today. Watch this as hit the pass. You don't see a lot of white shirts, and then all of a sudden, there's a bunch of them all around to, to smother the receiver after very little. So now third down. Sullins gets away. Looking for Chisholm in traffic. Oh, he should have had it. What a minute, the grab just shy of the 40. Oh, my gosh, and he might have been off to the races as well, but one of the defenders flashed right in front of him, made it cause a little loss of, of uh, concentration. And also, an official's flag, or hat, I'm sorry, was down. I think Chisholm stepped out of bounds, too. Yeah. The watch oh, yeah, as, the, as the player came flashing right in front and caused him to drop it, but it, it probably for not, as you right. pointed out, David, the, the hat's off. That means somebody stepped out of bounds. One more chance here with 1.16 to go. And a drop. <laughs> Lloyd Howard the third had it in his hands. And Texas A&M Commerce on its way to its ninth victory of the year and to the Division II playoffs for the fifth straight time. That will that ticket will be officially stamped tomorrow at 4 o'clock on NCAA.com. I'm not sure even if the receiver holds on to this one if he's going to be able to pick up the first down. He was, it was maybe about five yards short of the sticks, and the defenders were closing in. I know that's a little consolation to the young man for dropping the pass, but now we'll probably get Commerce simply uh, kneeling down. Now, Angel's got three timeouts that they were so inclined to try to extend this. But right now, Commerce is lined up in the victory formation. So, Angelo State will end the regular season eight and three, but two straight losses to end the year. The overtime loss at Eastern New Mexico last week and the loss here to Commerce, their other loss. Well, no one's beaten Tarleton State. And the Rams went to Stephenville, fell 30 to 13. You know, if you look at their wins, they did defeat Western Oregon here in the season opener, 45-20. A 20-point win at Adams State November 2nd, but will it be enough? They're going to sweat it out just under 24 hours from now. You mentioned, Neil, 4 o'clock tomorrow when the Division II playoff bracket is announced. Yep. Announced the seven in each of the four regions. Yep. Top top seed in each region gets a bye. Everyone else plays next weekend. Tarleton State was ranked number one entering today. They rallied to win at Western New Mexico. The top seed actually gets a bye. Seeds two, three, and four host. So we assume Commerce will go on the road next week as they're the sixth ranked team. David Bailiff, big hugs on the sideline. His first year as head coach in Commerce and his Lions are going back to the Division II playoffs. 17 to three, the victory. It's good to see David so happy. Yeah, there he is the shower, too. <laughs> and he's at a place like Commerce that fully supports football. And even in his two previous stops, what he did, Texas State making the national semifinals in 2005, Rice Conference USA champs for the first time in half a century in 2013. He is one of the more underappreciated coaches you'll find. He was out of coaching for a year, now finds his way to Commerce. And the Lions finished the regular season with a 9-2 and two record. Just a likable guy. We talked about him three weeks ago. Kind of in the mold of a Spike Dykes type. And Spike was one of his mentors as well. Just a likable guy that everybody respects and just loves playing for. He says over and above winning, he says, we just want to go out and have fun. And his team did that today, especially defensively, as Texas A&M Commerce on their way to the playoffs, knocking off Angelo State by a score of 17 to three. Back to wrap things up from San Angelo after this.
You don't have to look flashy to look impressive. This Texas A&M Commerce squad in a dogfight all day with Angelo State. If they come up with the clutch plays in the fourth quarter, and Neil, they're on their way to the playoffs after a 17-3 win here in San Angelo on the road against Angelo State. Yeah, it doesn't matter how it looks. It's, it's getting the W in the victory column when you need it most, and that's what the Lions did today and what turned out to be really a defensive struggle by both teams, only 161 yards. Uh, total offense for Angelo State today on 64 plays. Commerce not a whole lot more themselves, 242 yards. They were under 200 yards until late in the ball game themselves on 58 plays. So, again, it was the defense that dominated and Commerce coming up with just enough to win this one. Well, one thing we do know Commerce will have going into the playoffs is experience in the postseason. We mentioned this will be their fifth straight year in the Division II playoffs. They won it all two years ago. We won't know who they'll play until tomorrow. Likely they'll go on the road, but you still have to like the Lions' chances even on the road knowing they have the playoff experience. Oh, they would love to keep advancing. Of course, the national championships just less than an hour away from the Commerce uh, campus. Right. A second straight year will be at McKinney ISD's nice new stadium right off uh, the Sam Rayburn Tollway in the Dallas and the McKinney area. And they would love to get there. Tarleton, of course, is trying to get there as, as hopefully a number one seed if, if they can hold on to the number one seed after today's results. Well, that was the Jamal Williams 40-yard run, longest play from scrimmage for either team, which for all intents and purposes put it away, but this certainly did the touchdown pass from Miklo Smalls to Tyler Guy. Smalls leading his offense to a 17-3 win, and the defense did the rest with 10 tackles for losses including two sacks. So Texas A&M Commerce will find out who they play in the playoffs tomorrow. Tarleton State will find out if they have opponent, an opponent for next week or if they'll get the bye as the region's top seed. They came into today as the top seed in Division II's Super Region 4. We're so glad you've been with us, not just today, but this past month for our Lone Star Conference Game of the Week. I want to thank our producer, Corey Weaslin, and his great crew. And for my broadcast partner, Neil Horn, I'm David Salzman, saying so long from San Angelo as AM Commerce comes on the road and knocks off Angelo State 17-3. to